Knock Off Nation, we're back on deck. This episode 38, raising a glass here on this very fine Friday night, f- live from the Village Green Studios. Cheers. Danny and Bruce on deck as the uh, regulars this evening. Cheers, folks. Returned, uh, returned guests this evening, Justin's up from the Gold Coast. We're going to talk all sorts of sh- shit we got. <laughs> May... <laughs> Mayweather, who was it against? <laughs> <laughs> Mayweather McGregor this weekend, John Jones, and uh, also joined by a first timer tonight, the first official sponsor of the knockoff, Jakey from Stonehand Cold Press. Welcome, brother. Early. Cheers, boys. Thanks for having us. The uh, flavour of the night this evening is espresso martinis with uh, Jake's podcast fuel. Good lord. Couple, a couple of deep with multiple shots of booze in them so we see <laughs> see see where this goes first and foremost we've been grinding all week the friday night atmosphere works absolutely the best model for this podcast we've found what a weekend there's the uh the AFL umpire siren in the background the under 12s just finished half time over Village there Green studio shout out where you at <laughs> <laughs> it's all sports and rec out here two days away from the biggest occasion in combat sports history Conor McGregor takes on Floyd Mayweather. Boys, it, it's finally here. We've, we've talked at yeah. length on this podcast about our predictions, but we've speculated, speculated, and it finally arrives. No, no finer moment there. Do you feel like your opinion of how the fight's going to play out has changed at all through this, this process? Absolutely, I have, yeah, 100%. What have you, what, what's been your sort of starting and, and finishing point? I think, like most people, Conor just... He's infectious. He gets under your skin, makes you makes you believe. I was Mayweather all the way, you know, and then now it's it's up in the air. Connor just has this way of just lighting this fire in inside that makes you want to believe everything he says. Mm. His coaches all say it. He says it. More and more media are saying it now. More and more people are getting on board with it. <laughs> he believes it, and it is so convincing. It you is. do. Yeah, well, it is. I'm the same. I'm like you. I'm of Mayweather all the way. But the more and closer that it gets, the more sort of hearing how confident he is, you do think, oh, shit, hang on, is this... He believes it, absolutely. He's manifested it and it's here. He's genuinely excited for it because there's not a doubt in his mind. 100%. I almost feel like it's the other way around for me. I felt like when they first announced the fight, I thought Floyd doesn't stand a chance with this guy. And like, I'll admittedly, you know, I'm not one that is in any way qualified to speak on boxing. Like, I could count the amount of boxing matches that I've seen on one hand. I'm, I'm a UFC MMA fan, like, first, you know. And uh, I don't know. I just – I actually had a dream during the week that uh, that Connor got knocked out and it was this really – the dream was basically just the – the after the fight sequence. There was none of the fight in it, but it was Connor being carried out on a stretcher in his – polar bear mink coat (laughs) and he's coming to as he's being carried on the stretcher and i've seen this sort of like fuck i was watching uh i was watching the media scrum today where uh paulie malinaji confronts him have you seen that one where they get like completely in each other's face and bring your balls connor (laughs) bring your balls i thought he was saying boss but that boss the new york accent and then it took a few times. I watched it, like, him say it a few times. And then I was like, oh, he's saying balls? Yeah, bring like, balls. Yeah. Bring your boss. Like, yeah, D- Dana's coming. Like, uh, <laughs> He'll be there, man. <laughs> but I was, I was, I was watching that, well. man. And um, the amount of fucking media people and cameras and microphones and shit like that that Jones had around him at the time, I was like, how would you not be on edge? Like, he, he is, like, almost like he's at the center of a mosh pit and everybody's facing him and pointing things yeah. at him and asking him questions and shit. Surely, surely, no matter how confident and fucking everything like that you are, you would have to get a little bit on edge and agitated at times, you know, and, and, and you know, to then have somebody on the periphery that's telling you you've got no balls and is getting in your face like that you've, that you've already had fights with and stuff like that. And that look of – it was the same look we got when um, – Floyd Mayweather got all these boy when he was like Voltron, yeah. on Voltron, Voltron on one of the um, on one of the press conferences, and all these like steroid goons, steroid goons and shit like that um, surrounded him. And you see Connor sort of like looking around like a like a panicked cat sort of thing, you know. And uh, that was the same look that he had on the stretcher as he's like waking up in his mink coat and shit like that, saying he wasn't knocked out, he wasn't knocked out. And I woke up and I was like, I fucking doubt. Uh, there's doubt in my mind. Funnily now, you know? enough, if if like everyone's saying that. Floyd can't knock 
Connor McGregor out. I think that's actually opposite. I think there's all the chance that Connor has to knock Floyd out. Floyd has all the same opportunity to to knock Connor out because Floyd's not going to be out. Floyd's not going to. It's not going to be a Mike Tyson knockout from Floyd. If Floyd knocks Connor out, it's going to be catching Connor out of place where he's not expecting to get hit, and those are the ones that will make you. That puts you out where you you see the fighters afterwards and they're like, what? No, no, what happened? Like, and they they genuinely don't know what happened because they they didn't see it. Mm. And that's the that's the way that Conor will. If like I honestly believe Conor has a chance to knock Floyd out, but I also believe that Floyd has equal opportunity because Conor puts himself in such bad positions that he can get knocked out. But I just don't believe when everyone's so close to this thing and that has probably, you know, had boxing so close to their heart for their whole life, and they don't want to see their their thing get tarnished. Mm. And I can understand that because if, like, if I had studied jiu-jitsu for my entire life and I already loved jiu-jitsu, if there was some new thing that came along in 20 years' time where this young guy was going to come in and beat the pound for pound, like, the best person in the world at, at that time, I'd be like, fuck off, as if you're going to come in here and, 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 t- and take out our best, like, without even... Having one having one competitive match in that thing, but yeah, I I don't know. I just think that Connor Floyd is a, is a late start. Like he's a, he takes him a couple of rounds to get started, and that's the opportunity. Just an awkward one punch, just like that he's not expecting. Like you're silly if you think that that, that Connor is not going to even touch him because mm. Floyd does get like look at the first round of that Maidana fight. Yeah, he caught him way off guard, and then you know. As people say, like, they fought a second time and then, like, Floyd absolutely swallowed him at the end of that fight. So, Floyd can't, will, will work him out. Mm. Like, he's just way more technical than him. But to say that Connor has absolutely no chance oh, no. is silly. Precisely. The, the whole Max Kellerman thing, I'll bet you 100, like, trying to shob, trying to get him into betting 100,000. because He wouldn't, Kellerman's he wouldn't like, land a shot or something? Yeah, he, he won't land a punch. So, that's just idiotic. Like, if we're looking for, through to the game plan, like, I completely agree with what... Um, Justin is saying as well. I think both guys have the ability to be able to finish each other. And, of course, a guy with an eight-ounce glove going in to throw bricks, absolutely, if he can catch Floyd at Connor. What's he going to come into the ring about, you reckon? Uh, they, 165 they or say, something? They say his walk around is 170, between 165 and 170. Like He was 168 for the first Nate Diaz fight where he said, you know, I didn't cut an ounce of anything mm. so that's what he walks around but he probably might come in a little bit lighter than that just because he doesn't want to be carrying an extra like bunch of weight that might slow him down the later rounds so i'd say yeah he'd come in like mid 160s that's just out of rut like for sure and if so and floyd's weighing in at 150 like he'll he'll basically bang, be bang on that number yeah, yeah? he's eating, that's what e- say, yeah. eating like whoppers and stuff now like in the in the, in the burger videos. king yeah getting the just burger like, king. i'm already on weight i'm already on weight <laughs> It's like, yeah, but it's not about just your weight. It's mm. about what your nutrition and what you're putting in your body. And, you know, I saw an interview with Sugar Ray Leonard where he was like, you know, I, I give everyone I give everyone a respect that walks into that ring. And this is coming from, like, arguably one of the, you know, the best that to ever do it, Len, Sugar Ray Leonard, saying that, of course he has a chance. And, oh, fuck, I've totally lost my point. There. <laughs> no, no, but that's the thing. He, he has to be a chance, I think. If Sugar Ray Leonard like saying you're a chance, then for sure that's you know. yeah, that's absolute fact. Like painting a, ga- a game plan for McGregor, like pr- trying to do our own Mystic Mac and predict the fight. Jakey, do you see him basically ding ding the bell goes and he runs to try and swarm him, or does Connor have to be careful as well at the same time because Floyd's going to be able to crack as well and he's going to have? Does Floyd have the speed advantage in that fight? F- for mine, I'd say I'd say he potentially. Oh, that's would. where I was going with that. Sorry, mm. Sugar, Sugar Ray said. You can wake up one day and just, it's gone. You know, he's 40. That th- They always say the, th- the only thing that's undefeated is time. Oh, yeah. Mm. Father you know? time is the... And Floyd pre- has this aura around him like, yeah, he is undefeated. So many, like 49 men have tried. And 49, like, you know, you've got some, like, big names on that list. Oscar De La Hoya, Canelo, Pacquiao. Like, he's been, he's beaten everyone. And so he has this untouchable aura about him, but... Yeah, like they say, time. And then, you know, hearing someone like Sugar Ray say, he, some people just wake up and Ali lost. He goes, I lost. Um, all the best eventually lost. They kept going back and then, you know, that was it. Mm. We're so, talking about a fucking big 
age difference here. We're talking about twenty nine to forty years old. Yeah, that's got to that's got to account for something in this fight, you know. Floyd Floyd may look like he's twenty. He's saying, "I'm forty, but I look 20 yeah, yeah. I'm shredded <laughs> under here, <laughs> and I think and he looks I, fucking great for oh, his yeah, age. I like sure. nobody can I, fuck with that for a boxer, especially. Oh, that's a that's th- a long career, you know. I think also another thing to think about is like people say, "Oh yeah, he's a southpaw," but Floyd has. Has dealt with Southpaws before. He's nine and zero or seven and zero against Southpaws. Oh, he's forty, and it's like it's not any one of these things. But if you keep adding up little wins like the age, um, the Southpaw thing, the awkward stance, like if you have like all these unknowns, then those are all banking in your corner. And I think each one of those, in like in conjunction with the other, and plus. Just catching someone off guard, I think it it, it, it is a possibility. Mm. I think mm. all those things. I think one of the biggest things in a fight like this, whether it's McGregor or any younger opponent coming in against Mayweather, is those set timing counters that Mayweather throws. He has a set counter each time. You know, someone like Connor with his speed and age, and also the unorthodox timing in his shots mm. might be enough to sort of throw that. Yeah, that rhythm, that of rhythm, Mayweather, and that cadence, that thing that that's they, been drilled into him yeah. since he was so young, and I think that's why it makes it so interesting because all these traditional boxes have been brought up the exact same yeah. way. Same, they they hit mitts the same, yeah. same same counters, yeah. same combinations. Whether that will happen is mm. that uh, that's what makes mm. it. That's so, I read a, an interesting thing today from Austin Trout, uh, WBA. He's one of the weight class champions there now. He said he does quite a bit of work with Carlos Condit. And that's the thing. And he said like, he was giving Conor no chance, but at the same time, he's going into bat for boxing. Like, he's not going to yeah, come yeah. out and say, oh, 100%. man, this young, hungry kid, man, he's going to... Yeah. He might put a whooping on him. Like, no, nah, he's, nah, he's the boxer. But he said uh, when he was sparring with Condit, um, he's like, in pure boxing... You know, you just you just got the better of him, sort of thing. Yeah. It could be, yeah. Like in terms of, I I'm, I cannot wait for it. And my prediction has always been Floyd because I just in in my own head, I just can't get around the fact that this guy was a a forty nine and zero undefeated in this purely this profession. Yeah, can kind of close that gap yeah. at a younger age when he's having to do jujitsu and learning right like wrestling and shit like that. Floyd. Yeah, yeah. Like, I th- but I think there's the no thing... money to be made on yeah, him, though, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Unless you go and hit for him for like predicting a round stoppage or, or to the minute or something. Precisely. Then you can then you can pick some, but you like yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you need you need a sports almanac for that. So <laughs> are, you, are you guys? <laughs> You're the closest <laughs> I know, <laughs> mate. You're the closest <laughs> I know. I don't, you, yeah, I, are you sort it. of buying into the hype of of Floyd of this whole aggressive? Coming forward, stop a Mayweather. No, no I, I no, absolutely. Why, why would he do that? I absolutely think uh, Floyd has a look at him. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. If you want to come and try and get it, get it. I'll, I'll try and get your timing down, and then I can crack myself. Because yeah. Floyd knows it's twelve round. If he gets to finish, I think he'd be content with that. But it won't matter to him what round he gets it. You know, yeah. if he has to wait nine to, yeah, if, if Connor gets a bit tired and stuff, that's yeah, that's, that's the, thing, that's man. the smart to Like do. there's, there's that whole other element to a fight of strategy and, and Connor has zero experience at this level in, in a, you know, a 12 round boxing fight strategy. Yeah. And I think even just having this conversation now, uh, like in my mind, I'm like, I've, I've created this idea of Connor as this this multidisciplinary person who can throw all sorts of different shit at you and he's fucking incredibly unorthodox and fucking really hard to read. But I've never seen him fucking with only punches, mm. you know, take everything else away, take yeah. all those flashy kicks, take yeah. the clinch, take all of that shit away and then take somebody who's like arguably the greatest of all time at that discipline yeah. and who has all that strategy it and seems, shit like that. It seems it's like, like an un- oh shit, like an what, un- what am I thinking here? Mm. Like, Yeah, it but, seems like, a, like an unclimbable mountain. But you, you're right in the in the Connor, if you're going to believe that anybody can do it because he sure as shit believes it. Yeah, well, you're sort well, of like, well, shit, That's man, what I like, love about it, man. Yeah. Like it, I fucking feel like it's inspiring so many people to just be like, you know what? Like that insurmountable task that I thought I couldn't do, maybe I should f- try and tackle that. Mm. You know, even if I just try and start climbing. Like, Yeah. Fuck the Mayweather. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, man, I saw that uh, on a 
in graffiti on a big fence in Ireland, like yeah. out in the countryside, like all these green <laughs> mountains and shit, man. There's this concrete slab, like 15 metres long with like, fuck the Mayweathers and an Irish flag. That, like, that that's is the, gold, That's man. the other X factor <laughs> is in, in, in making Conor, uh, Conor McGregor, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's literally got a fucking nation supporting him. On his shoulders. In that, you know... In popular culture and in sporting and all that sort of stuff, I guess, you know, we've been around for, for three or so decades and, and in that time, it's been dominated with US culture and there's been other influences of different things coming in. But this is like the first time in our lifetime, really, that we've seen an Irish fucking superstar. And we're talking yeah. about a tiny little fucking blip on the map. Six mil. Full of very, is very really? passionate something people. Something like that. Six to, six to eight million Holy people or something shit. in Ireland. And, you know, are just known for their their tough fucking way of life and, and loyalty and, and you, you know, you know, whatever fucking universality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got um, solidarity. Good yeah. save. <laughs> you got a uh, prediction, Jakey? You going on the record? What? Uh, how does it play out on Sunday? Smart money is that Mayweather just eats him up. You know, coasts those six rounds and just finishes strong and and wins the unanimous decision. But. I don't want that to happen. So, I, you know, it's hard, <laughs> yeah. to, it's hard to even yeah. say it. It's yeah. hard to say. It, everything's better if McGregor wins. Yeah. Is it though? But, well, what about, the way what, I, are you, are you a, like, are you a regular UFC fan? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about his winning and that tying in with the fights that are left for him in the, in the lightweight division? I think whether McGregor fights again after this one, whether he does a boxing match, it, the amount of entertainment and content that, this is generated and mm. will generate mm. after if he wins is worth it to me. Because there's, yeah. there's the instant rematch clause you'd have to think if he does win. Do you yeah. think? I'd say what it probably do you think? would be there. Oh, the, re- think the rematch Floyd? would sell. And there's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there too. Floyd's like, saying it's his last fight. Floyd's yeah. saying he's not fighting well, again. I've never, I haven't if they heard dangle another 400 up, in front of him. Yeah, I was going to say. Apparently, he's, apparently his tax bill is only like 20 or something. Like yeah, that. He, he would be fine, I reckon. I think he would be <laughs> fine, eh? fucking fine. I don't man. think this is like a... a so many assets. Well, it is shit. a grab for the money, 100%. It's definitely, oh, yeah. it's oh, definitely but he's fucking also another chance to promote Against a dude collection. who's zero and zero. Do you have those stats? So he would be looking yeah. at that going... His biggest payday... He's 0-0. For, his, oh, for an 0-0 guy. Yeah. But do you think... There's any That's chance, crazy. Do you think that there's any chance whatsoever that Mayweather's just completely overlooked Connor and just been like, oh, he's just been... I've seen one of those fucking MMA fights before. They just Definitely. fucking swing yeah. their hands and they can't fucking punch at all. I'll smash this guy. Like, Ma- do you Ma- think... Or he's that... He's I think that he might be on- too professional yeah. and, and oh, pride worthy. Have to, hey. yeah. But after Mate, two years off? We will know soon enough because if he comes out and looks sloppy and stuff, he never has. No. Like, he gets... Yeah. He's the guy that doesn't get hit. So if he starts getting tagged in the first by an O and O guy... Do we know shit? Has he just been at the roller skating rink? Like, yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. riding horses and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Miami. Uh, look, he's yeah. F- for me, I'm gonna. I'll have to if I'm laying an, an out and out prediction. I'll say, I think Floyd will get a stoppage, maybe from like going to the body and say like round. I'll go round eight. I say he might even last that long nice. because he can take a he shot, Connor. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. can absolutely take a shot, but um. If he doesn't, I thought when he was in the Nate Diaz fight and he had to get on, uh, get on his bike and circle out a little bit and stuff to really get his to get his wind going again. If Floyd's there ripping to the body in a boxing ring only, uh, that's why mm. I think he might be able yeah. to potentially get a finish. If, I think, if I'm saying I think Floyd's winning, if, he, if Floyd doesn't if Floyd doesn't get knocked out, Conor will get finished late, mid to late. Yeah, yeah is my prediction. Fair Cra- call. Crazy. Yeah, like, it's, it's I, fair. You never want to go. You never want to go into a fight with the knockout being the only chance to win. <laughs> yeah, you've got one bullet. True. Exactly. You've got one bullet. Yeah, Use gonna, it wisely. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna stick and move, and he's yeah, like nah, yeah, so it's that, not gonna happen against Floyd, is it? Once, like, yeah. like Connor's probably got about four tricks up his sleeve. This is what this is just my like uneducated opinion. For sure, he's probably got four things that he can present to Mayweather that may cause a problem. And he can only show those things once. And then once Floyd has seen all of those tricks and goes, is that it? All right, here's how I'm going to display this. Like, rip, rip. But I think Connor is a more of a chance than a lot of people are imagining. And I think, I don't know. Maybe I'm be, just, he's big. Maybe he's going to be maybe, bigger. Maybe I'm just crazy. But nah. 
he's a big, like he's wide man. When you see his back and his shoulders, like he's a big unit and he's probably been like working, like all that inside clinch work, all that, like all of his jiu-jitsu, all of his, the wrestling, even though he's not a top pedigree wrestler or a top pedigree jiu-jitsu guy, he still has more awareness in the clinch and would know how to use his weight better. Oh, he's still an MMA position. world champion. So he could potentially wear Floyd out inside and then pick him off from the outside. That's what – the clinch is going to be so interesting because, as you say, bigger dude who's used to in, – in the body all the time. Yeah. Like, he would be holding on to body. reach difference. Floyd, uh, Floyd's got a really fucking big reach for a small guy. He yeah. does. Well, there's only an inch difference in height and reach, but I just think Connor's weight and his frame the, comes just in. Just overall weight and yeah. frame. He's just a bigger human. Like, yeah. def- most definitely. It doesn't look like a lot on paper, but I think What's, um, come fight night it will be. The bigger reach downstairs, do you think, lads? <laughs> I reckon Connor's probably got a bigger sack. Like he's probably got bigger, <laughs> he's got huge bigger balls. scrot, but he's um, I reckon balls. Floyd. I mean, you'd have to go with the stereotype. And neither natural, of them have. He's got more. And length. neither of them would have shit on Tiger Woods. <laughs> <laughs> should we, ta- should we Woods touch on that? <laughs> I mean, that. shout out back in that nine iron. Poor old Tiger Woods, my, one of my absolute sporting idols, one of my favourite human beings on planet Earth, uh, has had his. He's been the latest victim this week of. Celebrity hacking, you know what I mean? Where people jumping into their iCloud or whatever the fuck they do. Yeah, the Fil- filthy rich, uh, uh, the sound producer here would would know more how they get into that sort of stuff than me. But with uh, Lindsey Vaughn was a is a famous Olympic skier for America, has been multiple Olympic champion, super famous personality over there. Dated Tiger since he, uh, since his marriage breakup. Uh, they log in and see, uh, oh shit, Tiger's got some uh, plenty of nudes in in his. Oh, it might have been Lindsay's phone, actually, allegedly. So it might have been Lindsay's phone. So she was sending it. They would have spent so much time apart, that couple, that there was heaps of nudes, <laughs> right? Like, so there's heaps of nudes got released to him and Tiger standing in the bathroom and uh, he's got uh, he's dead set repping a one-iron, uh, Tiger. <laughs> They're mostly of her, but there's, there's one where there's she's obviously any of them. convinced him to uh, send one of his length. You'd oh. think that maybe he's... Um, my, I'll, I'll, get, uh, I'll get up the photo of Tiger's sword. <laughs> <laughs> you think maybe he's probably beaten up somewhat of a half chub and then sort of he's sending nudes of course he did yeah, yeah. <laughs> or he had like half a Cialis allegedly or something like that everyone you know does I mean? the fluff like, everyone bit, does the yeah fluff. a bit yeah. of enhancement you're not, you're not sending nudes without like going belting raw. it a dozen times, yeah. you know. What is the count at like? <laughs> you can't get to full. You can't get to uh, yeah, once full you, on staghorn. Once you just need some blood. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit of movement. Um, I started watching this series <laughs> last night. <laughs> oh. There's a series on Netflix called uh, Darknet and fucking. I started watching yeah. that as well, Ooh, man. Shit. <laughs> That's fucking rough. Straight from the intro, the the opening fucking credits to the to the show is basically like you know this digital sort of representation of all of your shit, like this concept of the cloud is basically, it's all going it's, somewhere. It's being yeah. stored you know? somewhere. Yeah. It's not just invisible. Every fucking picture you've taken, every like location service you've you've agreed to and that all that sort of stuff. That gave me some heebie-jeebies, man. Ooh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, I hope no one's watching my shit. Got some skeletons for my grandkids. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Tiger repping the one iron. <laughs> Can confirm. Tiger Woods, PGA, 2015, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. EA Sports. Definitely Next on the T. Definitely an athletic... Uh, Tiger, the sword, Woods. <laughs> definitely an athletic uh, couple right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shout out, Tiger. As I said, one of my favourite athletes, favourite humans on earth. Yeah, I mean, fuck. Unbelievable. He would still be all right for money, eh? He's not hurt. He would yeah. be flushed. Man. Yeah. He would Incredible. Like, golf, royal flush golf, for Tiger. Golf is yeah. like... Surely is they took away a fair bit of sponsorship money when he lost Gatorade and stuff like that. They were huge endorsements for him, but golf and tennis on, would be the ones that you would want to be individual sports, yeah. man. You're not yeah. sharing your dough with yeah. anyone, it's your own shit to get out and do it. So. Tiger Woods is just like when we were growing up, he seemed on on a similar level to like a Barack Obama, not not to use a racial like line there, but <laughs> you're saying because they look alike, man. You know what I mean? Just about yeah. like a total upstanding, like moral representative of what a male role model should be like but yeah. the, the truth is and we all fucking know it that like n- nobody is actually like that barack obama might be like that he might have lived his whole life like that but there's still that fucking element that you know you're a man you know you know what barack. we're capable of you know what those that you have the same mon- DNA. that monkey brain that, yeah, that monkey. Those, barack took those, bong hits 
<laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> he right. He smoked a bong. That's right. But you know that that fucking animal drive that someone like a Tiger Woods once once we get into this age of information and shit like that, the the truth of what humans are actually like comes out. He's a human. Yeah. He's a human being mm. at, at the end of the day. And out and out alpha male, like one of the most famous recognizable males on the planet, whether you're a golf fan or not, you know who Tiger Woods is. Because if anyone says the word golf, the first thing yeah, you think Tiger. of is Tiger Woods. Mm-hmm. If you're the yeah. average average American from any span in the nineties through to yeah. basically current. What he achieved as a black man mm. in that sport, like for sure, from, from a young age as well. But Tiger, it seemed to unravel for him yeah, when I, his I father passed away. I actually wasn't aware of of that, like what he had done in that until you had said that, mm. and I, you know, it really made me because I was like, you know, he's just a freak at at a sport, mm. but I didn't know, you know, how the politics of golf or anything like, that. and and to hear that, that's you know, that's crossing the. The, into the mainstream mm, to, to change culture. Man. That's it. Well, the, and that's the Muhammad Ali sort break, of style. It breaks exactly. barriers. Yeah. It breaks the barriers. So the socio-political sort of you know extension of sport. Like we have such a fucking worship and love for sport in our in our human culture. You know, it's it they're games at the end of the day, but yeah. it's like it has the ability to, you know, Muhammad Ali was like you could put him on the same sort of shelf as a nelson mandela or somebody like that you know they they have that ability to cross fucking divides and and to affect our society and humanity like Big tremendously time. yeah tiger had um john jones fucking yeah. had the opportunity oh. had the opportunity motherfucker <laughs> that's that's like you know we should we should hold judgment until all the mm. details come out yeah. but basically john jones who you know just just won back the light heavyweight title after having been off on several suspensions, one of which was a, a drug hit and run incident with a with a pregnant lady and, and several indiscretions with PEDs and, you know... Cocaine. We, cocaine, all sorts of shit. Like, we thought that he had done his suspension and he had turned a leaf and that's... Yeah, that's he'd won he, everyone's hearts what back. He, ...what he wants you to believe in and fucking... A week or two weeks out from yeah. from him winning the title back, we've just found that he's tested positive for Tyranobol, which is like you can't even claim like yeah. tainted supplements yeah. with that one. It's like an old just school Russian, yeah. like it's a derivative of Dbol or something like that. It's like the most sort of straight up steroid that you can get. Guilty? You're not you're not buying the tainted supplement this time Fuck around. No. Fuck <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude, it, it, if you you just have to like you know no one was taking that much notice because. He's been away for so long. But if you look at the difference, if you look at the difference in him, like when he first got into the UFC and now, even with all the time off, he's a different framed human. Like he, he's much more muscular than when he first got into the UFC. And you can't put all that down to like he's just diet and training hard because he's always, bef- like you didn't think he trained hard before he got into the UFC. Of uh, course he was training, but he got through on his attributes, his length, his his size, his leverage, his uh, speed, and and his natural athleticism, and and then you know you get into the top ranks, and maybe you have a couple of tough fights and go fuck, like you know I need to keep this persona of being the best in the world up, like I just I just won the belt and all these killers are coming after me, I'm the man to beat, maybe I need to 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 stay on top of the mountain. I'm That's uh, not so far fetched, but if, if a guy's willing to get loose on and, and take recreational drugs there's the same mindset come, can come into it when you're being competitive and trying to win and stay the best like the baddest man on the planet mm. I, I, the thing with the I'm with you I'm not buying the tainted supplement thing one, one bit <coughs> this time around where look I didn't believe it the first time personally mm. however if it comes around a second time it's just impossible to buy it again so look you couldn't have been that unlucky yeah. that oh my, someone made roids in my protein that, That's a steroid that hasn't been made since the 80s Yeah like, I think as fans we Legally or like you, you can't buy it sort of thing Nah And it's The, the thing that throws, throws it off is the, is the timing of the test The, the yeah. one that he tested positive for Is that a post-fight test? After no, weigh-ins done after, after, after the weigh-ins Really? Yeah, yeah So he popped before And that, that's the That's the The day before test that's like almost mandatory. So the turnaround on his test from there has only been found out this week. Is that right? No, the thing that makes it weird is that if if he if he tested clean the whole camp, which mm-hmm. you would think if he was gonna do steroids, it would be at the start. Yeah. Or yeah. or 
a previous. cycle before. Yeah. To test clean all all through camp on randoms and then get caught on one that they know they're going to have a day before the fight. Dude, but, but Did he take something three days before the fight? Unlikely. Yeah, it's or has, like, has he potentially got off his blockers or something like that? You yeah. know what I mean? He, would he be washing it with other stuff? Hey, here, take this, take this. There's a documentary on Netflix about... Uh, Performance enhancing drugs now, like Icarus or whatever. Oh, it's is that what that's it about? It, it could be science. Yeah, it's oh, all about I'm cycling and that. stuff. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a good look. There could be scientists out there for it too. It's yeah, like, like Lance when he had uh, that um, that's amazing doctor that you know was able to cover everything up. This he's, pass all the tests. And this everything. is a lot of that doco where he sees a Russian guy who can go and do that for him. So yeah. well worth a look. But with um with Jones for me it clouds. Everything. Everything. It does. There's, que- there's question marks. And that's, a, that's yeah. a downright shame because even though he's popped once, when the th- things like PEDs, when you see a 23-year-old freak show come in and run through Shogun who were like he was off the couch. Like, yeah. Exactly. It was blockbusting shit. He went on a run that, like for me, it was the greatest of all time, but now I just can't call him that. Yeah. Like I even declared after that DC win, I was all hail the greatness. Like I've, yeah. I've been on him, off him, yeah. on him, off him. The person John Jones, I'm like, nah, there's something, there's something a bit off there. Like I think, but as a fighter, holy shit, let, just let me watch. Like just l- yeah, let him fight yeah. every weekend. Like, That's why it's a shame. I think. Yeah, it is. see, I probably won't get to see that. No, no. At, at 33, the, the game changes. Like I've definitely. There's a 20. Sorry, Dan. There's like a there's a 26 year old out there now who's grinding that can break through in that time to get through yeah. and. Of course. They're coming. Like the athletes are coming three years at yeah, 30 yeah. years old to take off. And you think of the next devastating. You think of the next generation of freaks that are, co- are going to come through after this wave of like the Conor McGregor's and the Rondas when people say, oh, there, there is money to be made. There is a market yeah. here now. And all the gyms that have started up from the the, the Hoist, Gracie, Matt Hughes days. I'm a 14-year-old brown belt. Will yeah, you exactly. Ca- will you feel me? The <laughs> freaks that have yeah. been in like doing four or five martial arts since they were seven years old. You know, the Floyd Mayweather's And of they're out there. You spend time in gyms. Like, there is kids. Oh, man. Well, there's in amongst just these came, gyms. came from training tonight, training four-year-olds in jiu-jitsu. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Taking the four to eights. That's fucking insane, knee, man. It was knee bars tonight. <laughs> four-year-olds <laughs> doing knee bars. Like, yeah. oh, oh, my God. Just don't fuck with anyone. I, th- I, think, you, on I think you're right in that. <laughs> it, it fucking puts a question mark over a lot of those performances. And I've definitely been one to give John the benefit of the doubt through his whole career because I've been... Fucking a diehard John fan. Me you know? too, man. I'm hard. such I'm such a like, you know, guilty as charged hype hype man when it comes to when it comes to combat sports. I love the story of like <laughs> yeah. fuck, these guys on the up yeah. and up. Yeah. Francis Ngannou's yeah. my latest. Yeah. You know, like, need a team to rally if there's a hype train, fucking yeah. tell I'm me tell me yeah. where the station at. On the um, on fun. the WhatsApp, Chris and I are there <laughs> like, man, DC's grinding again, he's grinding again. Danny like next. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Like, what's going to be different? Like, yeah, he's got us. But, yeah, no, no, no. Like, Kane's at camp. Like, they're wrestling. Like, head kick. Like, game over. But, but it's, it's, but, like, it's a, a crying shame. That's the thing. Is there a... For me, though, did he... <coughs> OSP seems like the most recent performance of him where he'd taken a bunch of time off. Yeah. These are all allegations. It's speculation as a fan. Huge and speculation. We're, yeah. we're all allowed to do it. We're not going to get sued, like... Hopefully yeah, not. Yeah, no, no, no. We get a call from Malky. Uh, like, Malky <laughs> gives us a ring. Like, oh no. It's been a good it's, thirty-eight episodes, fam. Yeah, that's Fuck it. <laughs> They're all allegations against him, and he obviously is innocent until proven guilty. But and if there's anyone that can get him off, Malky's gone. Malky's set the precedent on how to fight these mm. things. He, e- every one of his fighters has had a tainted supplement. It's probably not Would the you claim to fame you want. Yeah. <laughs> Would you buy a used car off Malky? Car. <laughs> <laughs> But sure, yeah, sure I don't know. Nice like this, this is the first time for me that it's actually changed for me, and that idea of giving John the benefit of the doubt, and uh, it's just like I honestly, you know, we we were discussing during the week how, as fight fans, you get so invested in these people, you know, because you. It's I'm like spending this, my free time watching them do their shit. This, yeah. We're this, absolutely this, buying in. This yeah. news comes out and it's fucking, it'll affect your day, you know? It's like you have to all of a sudden text everybody you know that is semi-interested in, in combat sports to, I, t- to tell them this like bombshell. And I feel like, I don't know, man, it's it's like I've been mad over this, you know? I've mm-hmm. been like, fuck, I feel like, you know, yeah. I, I, I supported you. I yeah. threw the fucking hit and run through everything. Yeah. Like, you know, I had your back. I was I was happy to see you come back. And, and you know, 
I, I have to even think of people like The Rock. Like The Rock had fucking John Jones on his Instagram saying, you know, I thought you fucking, this is like backstage after his fight. It was an inspirational performance and something you said in your post fight would re- really rung true to me and, and all the people grinding out there is that it's never over. You know, if you're down, if you're out, you can come back and it, it's, eh? it's never over. And John's like, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> like, and, uh, and you know, all of all of those people surely have to feel some sort of like oh fuck he kind of fucking gypped us a Pulled little the bit. Wool you know? I, don't. I don't think you're the, I don't think you're alone, man. I think and a like, lot of people again, feel like again, that. I will totally reserve judgment until further detail come out. Like you know, I'm I'm obviously not in the know enough to know, you know, where the holes in USADA may lie and how these this sort of thing could be fucked up. But you have to think, man. Like since these stricter USADA laws came in, and we've seen way higher precedence of people getting popped it's just like fuck was his whole career a lie was this crazy record that like we're on show dog now and it's just all green you know it's like and big fucking names too like had, a uh, lot of wow moments and shit the other thing is the other thing is in like competitive sports at this level when there's so much money in it and fame and stuff on the line isn't everyone doing something? Like, you listen to guys like Chael Sonnen and saying, like, yeah, literally everyone on the roster is on something. I allegedly. think that's, that's the realisation after Jones failing now that you slowly come to. You mm. have a guy like Chad Mendes who, who gets popped. You, you look at his physique, you know, he's been accused a few times. Yeah. He gets popped. Trap City. A, yeah, apparently <laughs> for, a, for a, um, a cream, a steroid cream yeah. that he uses to treat psoriasis. If anyone's got a case to fight it, it would be someone mm. like that. He doesn't. He goes away. He takes his two years, probably because if you start to start digging up old tests, yeah, I, I, I think we're slowly coming to the realization that our generation of fans yeah. have been watching users fight oh. from the from the beginning. From the beginning. From yeah. the beginning. We're Fuck coming out of the dark ages of that, where the, yeah. there's physique city, and we always speculate on here using the keyword allegedly, but. There's plenty, plenty out there where you see their physiques before and after you started are here, and there's some changed fighters. Charles, Charles Sonnen, you mentioned him before on his podcast this week. He's talking about Junior Dos Santos, one of yeah. my favourite heavyweights from from back in the day. Junior's rise to fame, I absolutely adored his run. And yeah, um, from from the slums. But he's come up, um, and he's he's popped for his most recent fight when he fought Stipe, and uh, Charles was like. I was, in, I was in the crowd at those weigh-ins and uh, I said to the guy I was with, because um, Chael's there for ESPN and stuff, so he's in the crowd and he's like, hey, Junior's back on PEDS. Like, yeah. At, at the weigh-in. And Chael came out and blatantly said that and he can say that now because he's popped. Like, yeah. He can come out and absolutely say it. He's like, oh, Junior's back on PEDS. He's like, Junior always did PEDs on the rise. Mm. Yeah. It's like he always did. He's like, look at that run that he had. He knocked everyone out. Yeah. And he got off him and, and you saw it, but... Big fight got dangled. He got back on them. It's yeah. Like, oh, jeez. Like and it's total, um, total rumor mill speculation from me. But you can't help but think, okay, if this is if this is combat sports, and we've seen this recent crackdown because there is this added extra sort of level to combat sports where you're essentially like locked in a cage trying to kill someone with your bare hands, or get to the point where you're gonna put them away air quotes but like not kill them you know like it's it's mm. a much more serious ramification to losing a match versus losing a football match or losing a tennis match or or that sort of thing you know so yeah, I've, I've there's there's um you know this this new sort of influence of USADA and heavy testing and sort of really reining that in but it has to make you think about all the other sporting codes, you know, baseball, NFL, the rugby league here in Australia, like the rugby union. We, we all have the experience of the boys who, you know, in high school were reasonably framed guys and then, you know, they, they make it to an extra level and then all of a sudden they're fucking enormous. Like it's, it's hard to really sort of separate that and go, is it just people in fighting or is it just – professional sports and you you hear from a person like a Victor Conte or whatever who has done like you know books and several podcasts and interviews and all sorts of shit and he was um one of the coaches that was heavily involved in in helping people cover up their their use and and teaching people how to do it and somebody like that will tell you that it is completely ubiquitous across professional sporting like yeah. disciplines of all when money's so, all involved yeah exactly. when money's involved exactly. man, money notoriety and everything the, and the competition who wants to be the number one of course it's going to drive people we're animals like we were saying before you know 
And when that's dangled in front of you and, every, and when everyone else is doing it, when you see when you get into the top leagues or whatever and you see that these guys are all competing at a much higher level, there must be something going on. Mm. Who's a couple of, who are you, a couple of your favourite fighters? Jakey, you've been a, a long time Mixed Martial Arts fan as well. We've been Twitter followers going on, going on years. We're always following the game. Who, who are your sort of go-to guys where you see them on a card and go, oh, shit, I can't wait to watch them fight? Um, at, at the moment, um, TJ Dillashaw has always been a bit of a favourite. Nice. He, even coming up, he was he was a bit of a rough diamond. You could always see that he had great potential. Mm. And, um, no. Cody Garbrandt booked. How good. Yeah, yeah it's going to be. Is that 217? Right? Yeah, Madison Square Garden, Garbrandt yeah. v Dillashaw. <laughs> Cody coming off that back injury too. So that could be TJ. Like, I think Garbrandt TJ's put it, good. Put it, put it the best. He said we're, we're – we're two animals, and I've heard, everything you hear about them being competitive, two mm. of the most competitive guys. Um, I, I think you're going to see a, see a banger in that one. There's uh, talk of TJ with a bit of, bit of like gym bullying sort of training, with trains real hard and often. Yeah, like and, TJ, I would believe that for sure. Yeah. But competitive, as you say, just a beast. Never wants to lose at anything. That's anything, it. yeah. And he, you know, he hasn't gone without his, uh, you know. Aki's allegations with the with the PEDs as well, and and you know you can sort of throw up photos and look and speculate. Also, um, he is looking shredded. Fuck yeah! But he was dropping to one twenty five, so that could also be what, yeah. one. Of, what one was of your them. take on that? That was interesting. I was all for it. I I, yeah. I wanted to yeah. see him have a crack and. Mighty Mouse seemed to go the other direction where he wanted to. Oh, he to can't cut in line. I'm like, he's a former world champion from another weight class. They're trying to chase he ain't that, cutting in shit. You know, TJ was putting up that that super fight model. Like, let's let's make something. Let's make a bit of a spectacle. You know, you would think Definitely. that, that DJ sells would, now. You would think that DJ would jump at that. Like, oh, two guys from two different weight classes. Like, yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. And if TJ could have done well down there, I don't know. Yeah, I, you reckon, you, I, you're I of that so. opinion. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And I think if it had been, if if DJ gets this fight out of the way with Borg. Mm-hmm. I think he would probably be open to it, but because he is chasing that record, that yeah, legacy, yeah. He, he, that, I don't think he the, wanted a bar. That played a part in the decision. To yeah. And you Jeez, look how young TJ is there, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he's on debut there. He's got baby sponsors baby. on his shorts. Look yeah. at that. You can tell the old school. Yeah. Oh, I, I was meaning to ask you before, do you know those stats offhand that you sent to me during the week about Floyd's... Uh, apparel sponsorship. Apparel sponsorship. For, for, for this fight. Floyd is making... In apparel, and I don't know the the specifics, but I can. What was it? Because it was basically earning, like if you're a company and you want to you want to be on Floyd shorts, there's like. But but it's not not back just left, even uh, back not, left leg, front right thigh, yeah, belt, belt yeah, belt. B- front belt, back belt, but even things down to his his shorts, his shirt, his hat, his footwear at the weigh-ins, his walkout robe. Yeah, he's making fifteen million dollars in sponsorship <laughs> in his weekend apparel. <laughs> He's this getting, weekend, was even more than that's not even that. That's not fight like apparel. Six, six for one uh, spot on the shorts. That's his, uh, 30, that, that, 30 for that, that the ass up, on the shorts. Oh, so that's that's for his right. shorts. His shorts. That was all up. Are you yeah, sure? Pretty sure. I'll have a I look. I swear to God, it was like thirty just just to be on his ass. And could you imagine what these big companies, Rolls Royce, Versace, would pay yeah. to have <laughs> a single name on Connor's well, this event, walkout robe? Yeah. This event just is going robe. to be star studded as a motherfucker. You saw the Manny Pacquiao. Floyd Mayweather fight and you got Jamie Foxx up there singing the national anthem and just every NBA player and Hollywood actor like you know lining the audience it's going to be an absolute fucking crazy star studded lineup when they flash on that on that crowd mm-hmm. you would be what was the the ticket prices start at like fucking 10 grand or something don't they it's yeah a lot of people are saying they priced themselves out yeah, but then yeah, then, uh, I heard that too. It's the I'd biggest stadium too, so there's eight thousand yeah. more si- yeah. tickets to sell. Well, or I heard Floyd say um, in the Hawani interview that they've already sold more tickets than the Pacquiao oh, fight. Oh, they're up to like seventy million at the gate or something. Seventy eight or something. But yeah. whether that's true, that's from Floyd. But that's that's it's that's tracking r- very nicely. But that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. as his girl collection. That, I think that means <laughs> yeah, every <laughs> chance he gets, also girl collection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be um, there tonight. He was there. He, he went. Was. There. He was there at four. He w- rolled in at four a.m. Yeah. So come to a girl collection tonight. They probably close at five. He'll rock up. Oh at man, four. how much how much money would they be making this week? Here we go. So this is uh this is where Floyd's this is his weekend thing. So it's fifteen fifteen million just on his shorts actually. So mm. it is. You're dead right, Dan. So. His robe to wear to wear to the ca- oh, the ring. I keep saying cage, mixed martial arts fan. Wearing to the ring, his walkout robe. He's getting paid a million. 
Boxing shoes, one million. Weigh-in trunks, one million. His name on the floor, like Mayweather Promotions, five million. His post-fight hat that he's wearing, getting paid a million. His walkout hat that he's wearing, half a mil. Front side seems three and a half a mil on his shorts. A walkout hat. Yeah. Oh, five hundred mil. Five hundred grand to wear a hat hours. for two minutes. Yeah. Oh, I'll do a lot for five hundred grand. Like <laughs> a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Unforgivable. Uh, like <laughs> for, uh, front top waist, like his waistband, which would be like Hugh Blot or one of the, like the watch apparel that yeah. love him. Three and a half mil. The rear at the back, up on his belt, three mil, two mil for the front thigh. Rear thigh, 1.5 million. Real, to, real top waist, 2 mil. Like it, millions of dollars for a... Fucking a insane. Sti- a stitch on your boxer shorts. And you think, about, you think about the disparity of wealth that exists in the world yeah. today. Yeah, <laughs> this guy's just getting paid 7 points. It's criminal, really. You the, know? the money that these guys are making in terms of... They just pump that right into a uh, nutrition program or foreign <laughs> aid in... <laughs> The world starving is countries. So it's backwards, oh, man. man. We were like watch, so watching a 49 and 0 against an O and O, like woohoo! Like with like <laughs> fucking millions. consumerism. And there's like, people way up the back that can't even yeah. afford to eat. We're paying. We're paying for this for this product here. We're all going to spend our money on shitloads of alcohol and food to just gorge ourselves over an afternoon when these guys are walking away with just crazy money that could solve a shitload of problems. Eh? It is. I definitely won't be thinking about world problems while I'm watching that. Oh. Yeah, sure. They're touching gloves. I'm like, man, that Uganda shit is <laughs> lit right now. Like, Fuck like, Coney. It, it's yeah, the money stop part. Coney. I wonder what Coney's doing right now. I'm going to ask that as we're uh, as they touch gloves. Coney. Like, man, where do you reckon Joseph Coney's at right now? <laughs> Coney's like, shut like, the fuck yeah. up. Coney's in the front row. Man. <laughs> I don't know, mate. And missed the knockout. Like, oh. he lo- looks at me. Like. Ding ding. ding ding! Oh, <laughs> starched him! Oh no! The greatest but, um, <laughs> we, we were talking about it today as well. Uh, Game of Thrones fans out there, spoiler alert! Anybody here? Um, I'm not. It's it's barely a spoiler anyway. There's a scene in in the latest Game of Thrones episode that's like a pretty epic battle scene, right? And it's um, it's set actually in Iceland. And Bryce, sent me something today where they basically brought in a huge team of con- concreters to set up this whole scene and, and you know, there's all sorts of CGI because there's dragons and all sorts of shit in this show. And you think about, like, I've worked on job sites before for, you know, apartment buildings and you think there might be a bit of money in, in setting up an apartment building but you're literally talking about the same sort of concrete pour here for a, a, like a day's worth of shooting or something like that. And that's just one little component of it. There are incredible amounts of teams and teams of people doing all sorts of different shit that this the budget for this show would have to be in the millions you know would have to be tens of even yeah. if not hundreds crazy the return crazy that they're getting. and then you know go to the next level go to the fucking floyd mayweather's robe and his hat and his shorts for for what's wow. literally like you know half an hour work or whatever and it's it's fucking staggering to think how entertainment obsessed human beings have become you know what i mean we're we're so sort of bored in our lives that That's like it, hey. that this is fucking huge man we've had probably i reckon how many podcasts do you reckon we've discussed floyd mayweather and four conor or, mcgregor four to five leading in from from the moment it was announced to we've the been, leading we've been doing this podcast for a year now mm. shout out soundcloud they just uh took all our episodes off because we haven't paid our subscription <laughs> so <we'll, laughs> so if anybody's looking for anything pre-36 yeah, we'll uh here. We're waiting to once, pay once we get <laughs> Once we get paid, yeah. <laughs> we're hoping, uh, we're hoping our bet on... Um, $1.5 million for on, Con- on Conor McGregor comes off this weekend. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, but we've been doing this for about a year and fucking completely lost my train of thought. Where else are we going with that? <laughs> You've pretty much been talking about the... Yeah, hey, exactly, fight. exactly. I was um, looking at Dillashaw's abs up there. I'm like, man, <laughs> maybe you. Yeah, well, they, he keeps getting, a, you know, they keep saying he's got that mastitis. I think that's what they call it with the, the man boobs. Oh, really? And, and if you pull up a picture of the when he first beat Burrell and he's just um, flexing hardcore in the center of the cage with, um, with a bit of a... There's another name that's been... Uh, USADA uh, came uh, knocking. USADA affected. It, exactly. Hennen got ha- lit up on like the 4th of July. Hennen Aljo, has, who got him. Hennen hasn't won a fight. Since before USADA came in. Is that right? Wait. Further one. Right? There is one fight that he won by decision. Against uh, 
match, Stevens. I want to say Stevens. No. Did no. Barrow and Stevens fight? Yeah, that was a great fight. Did Barrow win that decision against Little Heath? And I thought Stevens got that. I think uh, Hen and Barrow beat uh, uh, Bowles, Brian Bowles. Did he beat Bowles? Or, yeah, yeah he, I, think I think he did. Right. But that's like Brian Bowles, you know, him to do with the big back piece and shit, a little thirty-five. I think um, the old school. He's a, like a crack yeah. addict, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he, he, he is in now. a trailer now. Yeah, Damn, allegedly. Man. Jason yeah. Knight. Yeah. Jason Knight. What a warrior, man. Uh, <laughs> reality check city for him <laughs> at that point, yeah, man. Ricardo. Lamas. He, Lamas is the real deal, they man. It's a shame. Oh, dude, he's a Lamas, yeah. he's dead set. The fucking most legit number two contender out in the world. Oh, like he, I don't think he can beat Max Holloway, but he's just right there. He's in an awkward spot. I would love to see him um, fight again. For but sure. yeah, like keep going with what you're saying. Lamas yeah, just uh, unlucky. Yeah, sort of born at the wrong time, almost yeah. one of those. Like. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of guys at 45 a bit like that. Uh, Lamas obviously lost to Holloway already, mm. and then you've got uh, Cub Swanson. You know, is it? You watch him fight. You watch Cub Swanson fight Dennis Siva, mm. and he just looks like a world beater. Yeah, gets. Gets right up there almost to a title shot and runs into someone like Frankie Edgar and just gets completely dis- dismantled. Yeah, it, yeah. Has to, it has to be Frankie Edgar, Max Holloway. Oh, it's, it's just an be, out and yeah. out. It makes no other sense that, like, Jose's out of the mix for now. Like, if Frankie became champion and Jose had to fight him, then so be it. Yeah. yeah. So be it. Frankie. I, I don't buy into the whole he's had too many. Too many shots. Too many shots. You know, if well, he's, you look a lot, you're right, favor. If he's the best, exactly. give him one. Exactly. And if you can stay at that number one contender spot, it's like, my, yeah. that's a hell of a job, you know what I yeah, mean? You're fighting right. all these young and hungry up-and-comers and, and knocking them down. I definitely think it's got to be Max and Frankie. Yeah. And who doesn't want to see that fight? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think, I'll, yeah, I'll watch, I'll I'll watch, watch any that. Frankie fight. Fuck yeah. I love Frankie Edgar. And Holloway. And Holloway, Holloway as well. I don't... It's a shame to see someone losing that, but honestly, I'd probably pull for Frankie in that fight, man. Mm. I love Frankie Edgar. It's hard not to like him, eh? Definitely. Yeah. Just tough, man. Fighting at 55, cutting like five pounds. Like, even just walking around at 55, yeah. fighting Ben Henderson. Ben Henderson, yeah. Like, yeah. Who's now a welterweight. Like, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Who would walk around at 85? Yeah. Like, Arguably probably. Won, that, won that fight. So For, you, yeah, they were close. Mm. UFC 215, that, is that competing with the Mayweather? Surely not. No. no, 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 no. Same night, man. No, well, it's, I saw it's down that literally down. everyone pulled their they've cards. Started, yeah. They've started promoing it and it's just it's, like... It's at Mandalay Bay. <laughs> The 12 <laughs> people <laughs> Yeah you got oh, Wait 2.15 we got Go and JDS Garnu. and Garnu, nah, But JDS is off. Yeah Who's in uh, Derek Lewis is, He wanted that fight But Someone's in for JDS Who is it There was talks of Overeem But I don't Overeem. know if It is Overeem I was going to say yeah. Is it Yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. Is he's in it's confirmed. I, th- I don't know oh. if it's confirmed. That's I the same rumor. So. Yeah. Okay. Where's Nungano? He's not. So he's not on this card at all anymore. Well, they've just pulled him. Wow. Oh, what Melendez. A Melendez is back in the mix. Gil going to forty-five. That's at one forty-five pounds. Gilbert Melendez. Yeah, that's, that's, fork it. Is that's that another guy? weird. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> little heathen. Little became, heathen. Oh, I'm the hardest hitter at forty-five. <laughs> like, who the fuck <laughs> is that guy? To, to <laughs> just put a fu- get back <laughs> in. Get back <laughs> in just line, became motherfucker. A, pump the brakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just became a fucking punchline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely a weird fight for forty-five with. Gilbert's Rankings debut wise. at 45. Yeah. Gilbert ranked 15 at 45. Stevens was a 35 No, no. Both of them spent most of their career at 55 and done well. Stevens knocked out Rafael Dos Anjos at, in, that's right. at 55 oh, that's as well. Right. So I, I understand Gilbert, you know, trying to refresh his career and all the rest, but I, I don't understand the cut to fight someone that spent most of their career at 55. Correct. Yeah, why Fair. not, why not yeah. both just fight at 55? Like chances it, are you're exactly, going to be the same exactly. frame dudes. Yeah. So, yeah. And you're probably going to get a more healthier fight. Yeah, exactly. Thinking, oh, I can cut to 45. They might give me like someone smaller be, frame. Yeah. But hang on, here, here's Jeremy Stevens. Like, oh, he's yeah, a 55er. Exactly. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Mate, very very fair point that actually. Yeah, but good man. And, and, and it's honestly, it's on people's radar now, the whole weight cutting issue. Like with people talking about um, introducing new weight classes and, and just like ha- the other day they pulled Henneborough out from fighting that Aljamain Sterling fight yeah was that a catch weight that was at a catch weight at 140 because mm, the commission yeah. said we're not letting you cut to 35 again because the last time you nearly killed yourself exactly yeah it, it is quite g- literally yeah like, he was in the hurt locker old uh, yeah. Hennon yeah and, and, and Jose's been close to that as well I've heard and, and Rafael like all these guys that are now moving up since Usada started how's Floyd I know McGregor's struggling to make weight. I'm like, no, he ain't. He no, ain't at all. Yeah. Yeah. Seen, no, he's not. Have you, you seen, have you seen him at 145, yeah. Floyd? Like, yeah. go, go to Google and look him up against fucking that's what Chad Mendes. That's why I think he might be just like, I mean, 
bear in mind, he is trying to sell the fight. So he's like, yeah. he's putting the thing out there. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he's struggling to make weight because like in boxing, they don't cut as much weight. No, like, that's because the, no, the, no the weight cutting has come from wrestling. Mm-hmm. The wrestling in college and stuff, everyone trying to cu- get extra advantage by going a weight class down. So that's why boxing's not big on, like they'll cut a little bit of weight, but not like, we hear guys in the UFC Weidman cutting, like, Meyer, like, cutting yeah. like yeah. from down from like yeah. light heavyweight down to like welterweight and shit. Yeah. Like you got thirty two pounds rumble. off in six days, like shit just like, yeah. ludicrous oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then going to get Connor's one ninety five in the K yeah. in the ring. Like holy shit! Look at the size of this guy. What was the war of words that went? Was there actually like I I heard the Tyson interview where somebody's questioned him on Connor fighting Floyd and basically said that. He thought it was going to be an MMA versus boxing match, and in that way, it would have been you know worthwhile. So it was an MMA fight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mike thought he, it was going to be yeah, MMA. Go on, well, no, Mike thought that it would be boxing versus MMA to see which was yeah. the better. Which, de- which is so Floyd MMA. can only fucking which is MMA. So Floyd right. can only throw Floyd, punches. Floyd can only and punch. Connor can kick knee, elbow. Yeah, take down. I mean, he just did that spinning back kick into the belly. <laughs> But did Connor say something back to that? Has he been quoted in the new years? Nah, to. Not, not to Iron Mike, no. There was a bit of jawing off between Floyd Sr. Like going in and throwing <laughs> yeah. some chat at him. I like, thought I read something today where Con- uh, Connor said that he would um, dismantle Tyson in an MMA fight. <laughs> really? Yeah. Nowadays, yeah. I don't know though. It could just be some, today, some yeah. clickbait yeah. something. Fucking but not in 1998. Mike, I don't Do you reckon know. he could though? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the next fight to make? Mike. <laughs> Mike Tyson. <laughs> you heard it here first. Conor <laughs> McGregor. It, Who you I've got? It, you, you, you laugh at it now, but like with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Stranger Mike. things. Have you laugh. offered Mike 400 mil? <laughs> Would he take it? An M- a straight MMA bout against he's Conor McGregor? Of course he would. <laughs> Where is Mike? 400 million. No, he's doing get hang- some, he's get doing some tigers back in his front yard. He's doing hangover shit. five, man. What do you reckon, what do you reckon Iron Mike could, could, could cut to? <laughs> We got a Bucks pot. We got a stag do in Budapest, Hungary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell! Yeah, I, I haven't heard kind of give too much thought to those boxing v MMA sort of questions, and that they, they keep getting thrown around because, like he keeps saying, this is a boxing fight. Mm. Therefore, it's not even half a fight. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's it. He's towing. He's towing his own line. You did right. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. bounce. He- I bounce heads off canvases. I uh, will take his go head through the guard. Yeah. And of course, he's got to play. I think he's really making well. a point out of just like reiterating the fact that like this is a much safer game than we're, if we're used on, to. If we were on the street, it's I like more. If like you, all you boxing fucks need to like, and this is like me paraphrasing. I'm not saying anything about boxing because I respect this, the martial art of boxing. But we'll edit Connor. all that, all of that out later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll hang you out to dry. Don't worry. <laughs> all I'm saying is. Yeah. Fuck boxing. <laughs> <laughs> They're clearly just not as skilled. Oh, like no. what I'm f- saying all is, all five boxing fans I respect. In Australia <laughs> will be coming after you. I res- <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh shit, sir. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Um, how can I recover from that? I can't. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> I fucking just completely lost my train of thought. What more can you say, Sonny Wilson? Fucking Sunday. Sunday we will finally find out. And it's interesting because, you know, this is arguably the biggest fight of the century and we're so fucking hyped up for it to see it. But at the same time, if you compare this to even like, you know, UFC 199 or something where you get to see several incredible fights yeah. on one card, there's there's a part of me that almost doesn't want to see Connor win because I want the likes of Connor in my chosen sport, in, the that, UFC. in my chosen promotion that's yeah. the UFC, you know? And I don't know, like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, couldn't even tell you who's on the undercard. Yeah. It's, it's basically, I'm paying, I'm paying the pay-per-view money, to watch excuse that. me, so to yeah. see yeah. one fight. Yeah, I think, I, yeah, it's, you go. I don't, I don't like that, the boxing model of, you were just going to put, all, like, no, like a whole lot of people that no one knows on the undercard, or or, or people that are yeah, just you know just know. on the brink of breaking if he, through. If he if Connor wins, he stays in boxing. I think. Do you think? I think the, so. the checks, what, the what checks are there. He can go into his own McGregor promotions, like Floyd yeah. has done, and go, "Hey, Canelo, like, or, like I've, I've, j- I've just I've just legitimately beaten Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, any of you just can come and get it. I'm promoting this shit under yeah. um, McGregor promotions." He can't go. So he's going to make between say seventy five and one hundred and twenty five here, depending on how well it rates, and that's probably US, is it as yeah. well? But yeah, he's got um, 
his income, he can't go back to the UFC and fight Tony Ferguson and ask Dana but for I 100, think it's for 100 be, million. I think it's going to be so that. much different if he wins. He then becomes the biggest spa- star in sports. Just hold the UFC to ransom, which he would. And, and what he can then do from that is he can create his own model where he's like, you all need to realise... Like, what if he gets on the mic afterwards and be like, you all need to realise UFC or the MMA is the ultimate or this, you know, and completely takes the shine or tries to take the shine off boxing and then completely redirects traffic to, like, make people realise... Like this MMA guy did it. He did it. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe we should take a look at this. Maybe it steers a bit of traffic in the direction of MMA. And who knows where he's going to go. Every time you think... Like, every time you f- watch him compete and then see him on the mic afterwards, you're like... You don't think it's going to go to the next level. But somehow he manages to fucking rewrite what the, whatever the fucking laws are that we live by in our society and just completely just take things out of left field and just be like, fuck the rules. This is going to happen now. And then we all just go along with it. Mm. You know, like who's, who would have honestly thought that he was going to fucking fight Floyd Mayweather? Oh, it, I, I ruled it out instantly. Before it was signed, it out, before it was signed, before it was signed, I was like, "Yeah, it's good to talk about, but seriously, like, this is not going to happen. So mm. let's just stop talking about it." That's mm. For my own selfish reasons as well, that's why I'm sort of like, "She's if Floyd wins, he's guar- I think he's pretty much guaranteed to come back to to MMA because say say he wins and he goes to Canelo or Triple G or any of these sort of like really high end boxers that can sell. Give me watching Connor against a. Tony Ferguson or a Khabib or someone in yeah. all disciplines yeah. any day of the week than him just punching because yeah, definitely. Yeah. his kicks, like he's there throwing spinning back kicks Everything. at Khabib as he's trying to shoot in and shit. I'm just, my dick is just rock hard. That, yeah. The person that McGregor is, does he go back to MMA after this fight? Do we see maybe a, a McGregor Sports and Entertainment and UFC mm, for, a, for a third Diaz rematch? Is that... Is that where his passion is? So he's made his money. Mm. He Do has three or four I left. Think, See, I yeah. honestly think he, that, that, that is more likely to happen. Does he promote his own boxing if he wins McGregor Productions boxing match against Nate Diaz? I tend, come in I, and box only. Mate, I, I, I tend to like through what – to what you're saying, Justin, about – you know, the whole reason that he has just had this tremendous amount of people latch on to him and who he is is this mindset that he has towards his life and all of that, you know, um, visualizing things and ma- manifesting your destiny and all that sort of stuff. He's all, all about, you know, seeing yourself in this incredible, you know, end state reality and going to that next stage. And it's like he, he breaks all of these fucking notions that you think, oh, you know, of what's possible basically and i tend to agree with you brycey in that if he does win this fight and he achieves this fucking tremendous like biggest most notorious athlete of all time status i see the ufc as a stepping stone to to something bigger that may not necessarily be as satisfactory for the fucking mixed martial arts fans like us but that would lead to something that hey this is way more fucking yeah. bank yeah. for way less damage and something like you know start my own boxing promotion and hey hey Paulie fucking mm. let, let's have it out let's do let's do a whirlwind media tour and sell the fuck out of this or going into movies or something like that he's already dabbled in that a little yeah. bit like you got to think that somebody in his position who's gone literally in four years time from and it's the rags to riches story is part of why we all latch onto it as well and yeah. in all of his promotion they love to talk it up is the fact that he's gone in four years from from welfare to like one of the highest paid athletes of all time. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've I see I see that that Floyd Mayweather model where it's like it's more about the money than it is about this, this purest mentality towards yeah. mixed martial arts and and I don't know. So there is that part of me that's like like you, man, I wanna see him I wanna see him come back mm. and fucking fight Tony Ferguson or fight a Khabib or or somebody like that. But that is a lot more risk and a lot less reward yeah, for him I, and his business plan. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't think McGregor's gonna play by those like everyone's thinking, you know, because I, I hear the argument all the time, oh he hasn't defended a belt and I kind of think, well he kind of doesn't need to because the reason why everyone's trying to hold on to the belt is for the money. And and a lot of these people, you know, want the notoriety of being the champion. Whereas he's eclipsed being just a champion and, and able to say, I can transcend 
what a champion is and and just do my own thing and I'll just create my own legacy in that. Mm. I agree with you in the fact that I want to see him come back and fight all these other guys that are in line because I think that, you know, they actually pose a real lo- like threat to his life, you know. Yeah. Someone like a Tony Ferguson or Khabib that if they can get him Kevin down Lee. and you kind of want to see him tested and challenged like that. But I like like you say, he's probably – he doesn't – care about proving his worth like he just has to say i'm the best and then if no one actually you know beats him like well diaz beat him but if he can go through this mayweather fight earn 100 million dollars and then see you later or Mm. yeah i don't know yeah i think i i i tend to think the same about floyd as well and he uh is is his manager that uh leonard malerby or whatever Ellaby. Ellaby. ellaby Can never get that dude's name right. (laughs) But uh, he was saying in an interview that it's only the fans that give a shit about this 50 and 0 thing. Floyd doesn't give a fuck. Like, he's happy to retire 49 and 1 if he retires. Like, and in Floyd's words, it's all about the money. You know, it's all about money for him. And I, I don't know, like, I. I think that maybe the the fans latch onto that sort of thing more so than more so than anybody else. And it's like these guys are well aware of the numbers that are involved, you know, and f- and for Floyd, he's like, yeah, I'm taking an unknown. Like I could, I could end up fucking on my back here seeing stars, but it's worth it for this, this half this an hour's paycheck. work that exactly. I'm getting hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. Like, and being able to get out and promote all of his other avenues of making money. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. think he's hurting at all. I, don't I think, think all this tax shit, there's, you hear all the time about, guys like 50 Cent and all these big name celebrities that ha- know all these loopholes and clauses in the US tax system, how to like, you know, f- like... Declare skirt, bankruptcy. Yeah, and skirt then the lines. So I think all that is just a, a tactic by the by the people that don't want Floyd to win. To just some, just uh, to be like, oh, you see, he's trying just doing it for the money, you know? Yeah. He doesn't actually want to fight or he has to fight. So that's why he's vulnerable. But I don't think he's... I don't think... I think he's cruising, you know? And I think the people like Floyd and Connor come from the same type of competitiveness where it took someone like Connor to dig Floyd back out of retirement. How many more people are going to watch him fight another boxer after the Pacquiao fight? Yeah. He sort of, you know. And, and the other, yeah, that's a really good point because the other thing is that a big part of the reason why Floyd probably took this fight is because in most of his fights, he's had to be the trash talker and had to sell the fight. And he's mm-hmm. the reason why people yeah. want to tune in and buy the fights. You either hate him and you want to see him lose or you exactly. like him and you want to see him win. So he's usually had to carry the whole pay-per-view, you know. And there's always been like that challenge, that may, that guy that may get him. Mm. But in this one, he's kind of like turned himself into the anti-villain. Exactly. Where Conor he's McGregor's this bad guy coming from MMA, so yeah. it's it's two sides of the of the pay-per-view draw that people are tuning in for like multiple reasons now, not just to see him lose or win, but also to see how this guy goes. Then you've got the spectacle on top of a guy who's never fought in boxing but, and it's just colluded. So he's probably just seen this as like, this is too many dollar signs to yeah. pass up. Yeah, De- definitely. Say, t- say, uh, so, say Connor is to come back to mixed martial arts. He's got uh, the interim title fight at his, what I think is his premier weight class at yeah. 150, yeah. 155 pounds. Tony Ferguson versus Kevin Lee has just been announced for an interim Bryce is just casually lifting the uh, <laughs> hairless cat up off the table and <laughs> popping it down on the ground. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and I really see Kevin Lee as a bit of a, a rebirth into this 155 division. We can only talk about Nate Diaz and yeah. the amount of fights he turns mm. down and then Khabib and the amount of fights he pulls out of. Kevin, um, Kevin Lee to me is a breath of fresh air at 155, exactly. man. Yeah, he re- really is. He comes, yeah. he seems to get the game. He gets the talking. He gets yeah. the, you know, the persona and he's buying yeah. into that model because it fucking works, It works, man. You know? man. Everyone knows can, who Kevin Lee is now. Exactly right. If I can listen to, and absolutely no disrespect, but if I can listen to a, a sit-down interview with, Stipe Miocic or I can listen to <laughs> yeah, Kevin Lee yeah. spitting venom into yeah, a mic for 15 I know which one I'm going to yeah. choose it's unanimous yeah. to even Stipe Tony, like. even Tony <laughs> 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 dead set but uh, El Kukui though man, he's, he's one, a, we got a world champ <laughs> oh, world champ <laughs> shout out oh, Stipe hi, oh. He, oh hey yeah. he had um, Tony Ferguson though when we, you talk about TJ before El Kukui's always been one of mine man I've yeah. watched this guy since Ultimate Fighter Team Lesnar shout out 
Uh, Tony is a bad motherfucker, man. And he's Fuck. got that yeah. Jits game now yeah. tied up with Eddie Bravo. And he's learning to uh, – well, not learning because he's got him, but he's, the evolution of that dude's elbows, man. He's hitting you with strikes from everywhere. He cuts and Ke- Kevin is – Better get ready to get sliced up because it's not going to yeah. be an easy out. No. That is a legitimate fight, man. Oh, and yeah. that is a dangerous fight for whoever comes out of that for Connor to come back to. Oh, yeah. Uh, both oh, yeah. of those guys put put him, put him Connor away. I Definitely. Because McGregor now is dedicated to a camp purely for oh, boxing. boxing. There's yeah. no way he's rolling and shit. Nah. If McGregor is comes there back, or it's for the Diaz No, you, you don't think he's doing any sort of rolling no, or anything no, right no, now? Connor? No I think he's pure, pure stand-up, I think, right pure now. Pure stand-up. He'd be trying to close the gap on McGregor, bro, you'd think. Okay? Like, oh, I think so. That's no, the yeah. assumption that I would make. He's got yeah. so much time to make up, man. He can't be... I'm just going to do these wrestling take th- wrestling D right now. Yeah. Like, yeah, he'd probably nah. be neglected for a bit. And these two guys that are coming are big 155ers. Yeah. With ground arsenals, man. Kevin Lee took Michael Kies's back and just wailed on him. Yeah. Out wrestled a, a, a Russian, sh- an absolute beast of a Russian yeah. uh, before the Kiesa fight. That's right. And, and the, the Russian looked big, strong. Kevin Lee just threw him around, Straight got, through got him. on that, his back and choked him out. Rustam All their last Kabilov. names sound the same. Rustam Habilov? Habilov. Habilov. And Kevin Lee, Kevin shout out for them a, abs. Kevin Lee's a big 155 of Ferguson sort of towers over him a little bit, uh, which is El- surprising. Man, El- I was watching uh, El Kikui's warm up for uh, 209 before the the fight that was supposed to happen, and watching him do all these Imanari rolls and this crazy like transitions from break dancing, take, mm-hmm. take dan- uh, takedowns to like He's leg fucking break dancing, bro. <laughs> Leg locks and like all this There's crazy M&A shit. He rolls into the legs. He, he does, oh, man. He does. Yeah. He did that to Edson. Yeah. And he shot only, in at his legs. The only other guy I've seen do that and like be semi-successful, well, he wasn't really, but kind of pulled it off, was Rory against Stephen Thompson in Rory's yeah. last fight in the UFC. He went hard on them. He was just going for the 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 Imanari roll, which is uh, basically you're standing at, at kicking range or like a, an outside distance of boxing range, and you roll over your shoulder straight onto, like straight from standing onto your shoulder, and try and latch onto the guy's leg, and that's that's what. And Tony Fer- ballsy option, ballsy option because there's a lot of things that you can walk into, which like like knees, elbows, oh, a lot, head all kick, those things. Stuck on head your kick. back, yeah. Um, Short right from the power because it's low to the ground. Just there's a Polish guy, Misha, not Misha Serkinov. Um, he fought. Volkan Ozdemir? No, no, no. <laughs> 55. No time. No time. No time. Ma- Marcin Held? Marcin Held. Yeah, yeah. Nice. He was a 22... And, he, was a yeah. two, he was a 22 and 0 in other organisations and he's uh, an yeah. absolute wizard on the mat. Yeah. And he came in and he fought... Uh, I don't know who they gave him first. I think it was Joe Lozon or it was Diego. And Diego... Diego. Yeah, it, it was, was Diego, Diego Sanchez. It was Diego and he lost that fight on decision. He did. But he showed some... It was some a ledlock game. Yeah. Horrid. And Diego's a monster yeah, on the map, yeah, man. Yeah. I didn't know he was that good on the map. Just experience. Just Dude, experience, Diego man. been at He's it seen like everything. Close to two decades. Yeah. You know, like... But Marcin Heldman... And then he went for an Imanari role on a guy. He just last fought. And um, I can't remember who it was, but nah, caught yeah, him... Yeah, just an up-and-comer. Him, just caught him with a knee um, as he was going in and he went out cold. And I was like, man, that's why people don't do Imanari rolls. That's the risk. <laughs> that's the risk. That's what happens if you fuck it up. But going back to the, the Tony fight, he also, Tony does leave himself open for the straight punches. He, do, he does get hit down the pipe a lot. Oh, look at yeah. Lando. Lando but, Venato yeah. teed off on him. So yeah. I'd love to see Kevin Lee that comes from a heavy boxing Gym, you know, his main main Sharp, trainer. Sharp, straight punches down the pipe. Exactly. Yeah. Kevin main, Lee sparred with Mayweather quite a lot. Yeah. Funnily and he, enough. His main striking coach is from uh, the Mayweather gym in Vegas. So to me, that that's that's one of the most interesting uh, up-and-coming fights. Cannot wait for that. They stack a Madison Square Garden up as well. GS, so when, GSP when, Bisping official Bobby since Green's our last podcast. So we got some fucking good fights coming towards the end of the year. It, it's on. It's on the way. Yeah. There's a bit of a. It seems like a bit of a lull now around the May Mac. Like yeah. it, it is. They got. What was the last one? They stacked it up with the three title fights. Two fourteen. Because Fuck then man. we took a break a little bit. Two sixteen is stacked. Two sixteen and two seventeen are stacked up. Derek Bobby Lewis. Green's got that dome piece done. It, yeah, he has. Oh. Miss me. <laughs> Uh-uh, <laughs> not there. Uh-uh. 
bang and then he got tagged. Like Did someone really lit him up. Poria. Who was that? Poria. Dustin Poirier yeah. was lighting him up and he's like Still there throwing smack Did he talk. recently have some issues outside of the cage? He did, yeah. yeah I think oh, he always. Plenty, yeah. yeah. Pl- plenty of... Uh, With a headpiece like that? Yeah. <sighs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, I think he, he, his no, brother man, was, He's a Christian. Uh, he goes to church every Sunday. Will Shit. Brooks, there's one. Look, he came over and... Ill Phil. Jeez, he came yeah. over as, as a Bellator world champion at 155 pounds and in the UFC has looked anything but. Yeah. Let's be perfectly honest. Yeah. Mm. Do you reckon... Got um, stopped by Cowboy yeah. Oliveira. The Carney Lentz there not looking like an athlete in the uh, <laughs> just got off the roll. Awesome. Hands low. <laughs> yeah, he passes the <laughs> shout test. out Dolce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shout yeah, out yeah. Mike Dolce on the Nick Lentz. Yeah, uh, definitely don't have to worry about. What's him that main Minnesota. event there though? To be announced. To, to be, be determined. What is that? It looks like a heavyweight fight. <laughs> is that the two completely yeah. blank avatars? Oh. We're, we're looking at the, <laughs> yeah, no, no, the right. UFC uh, website here. Hopefully, is that that's Brian what they've rescheduled. Francis yeah, yeah, Brian football. Ebersol versus Gray Maynard. No, is that the Brian <laughs> Ebersol shadow? Bullshit. <laughs> 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 it looks like you were fucking. No, no, no. <laughs> no that. I'm looking I'm, at the shadows. I'm being no, serious. I'm pretty know. sure that's Brian Ebersol. It's a similar chest rug. Black, blacked out. <laughs> it does. It does look a little bit like you guys know way too much. Uh, it's um, do Curtis, give, it's Curtis Blades, man. <laughs> 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 Who do they give Stepe next? Does Francis get a shot? Fuck, maybe. It's got to be Kane. Do you know doesn't what? It? Heavyweight, heavyweight. Where is Kane at though? Is, it, mate, is Kane? He's just, having back <laughs> surgery, man. Yeah, spinal. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's spinal. spinal. My it's back spinal. is broken. <laughs> My back is broken. <laughs> it's it's man. It's not looking good for the heavyweights in the UFC. That's why it was so good for John to go up. Like, I wanted John to go up yeah. after that. Just let him juice. Fuck. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> What's up, John? Fuck. <laughs> yeah, a lot Just of... let him go. Yeah, I know. It's, I know. It, it, that's the argument. It's like, you get if you get into fighting thinking you're not going to get hurt, just... Does John... Would, if, you, if they could sign on a... They, if you knew they both signed no, waivers they, no, going into it, no, would no. you you'd it, no, still watch it? Can't yeah? just, you can't yeah, just be one fight. You have to be a whole league that if you know... That what the f- the fans have to know what you're watching, and the com- both competitors have to know what they're getting into. Yeah, you can't have one guy that's skirting the rules. You, I'm you fine. Get their, you get their PED list, on yeah. like a criteria sheet <laughs> before the weigh-ins. <laughs> I'm fine if everyone knows what's going on mm. because then everyone's on a level playing field. But when one guy's trying to stay clean and the other guy's doing shit behind the curtains, then you that's why of it, course that's yeah. why it rubs everyone the, deception, the wrong way. Yeah. The yeah. deception of John Jones. He had the audacity for me. I, He's always been a, a really confident and it seems a bit on himself sort of guy. And being a, a world champion at 23 years old and a sponsored by Gatorade and Nike, fucking probably who wouldn't be really at and that age? When you're still growing intellectually, mentally, yeah. physically, like at 20, I look at myself now at 29 years old compared to 23 years old and there's a, it's absolutely fucking worlds apart, worlds apart in, in apart. some standard anyway. Yeah. You know? <laughs> He's still surrounded still by... Got, his... still not, not a perfect human in any way, but it, it'd be hard for John, but he had the audacity to... Tr- to put up a tweet about uh, on his Twitter in the cage at training at Jackson's fucking looking huge camera shot up at him walking around the cage going Daniel thought the only the first time I beat him was because I was on steroids what's his excuse going to be this time Steroids. That seems to that <laughs> seems to me uh, again, yeah, yeah. again steroids. Terribinal. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. Someone's that, gonna make your, a video about that. That's Someone. some Lance Armstrong audacity. Oh yeah. People that threw mud at Lance Armstrong, he buried every single one of them publicly in the media. And he, he a, was able he to look a, straight a, down the barrel of that camera and, and say, I'm not doing steroids or PEDs. Exactly right. And he and that's he, some sociopath he shit. He bur- he buried people where people came out uh, one of the massage therapists slash like physios on the um, on one of the cycling teams for US Postal that he rode for, said that she saw vials of blood being transported between vehicles, which she absolutely fucking would have at the time. But they, they all popped in the end. Mm. So what, what does Lance do? He comes out and goes, oh, yeah, look, she's basically a team-hired prostitute like for, for the single guys. I heard, I heard she was doing sort of like sex work for, just for people on other teams and stuff like that. Right under the bus. When, when she was just an innocent victim and her career is like well, her name's it's fucking done. mud in that industry mm. forever Business because she burning. dared to speak out. And that's sort of the that mindset. And Lance was happy to do that. Yeah. I hope for the sake that John isn't like that, but it's alarm bells. When you piss hot for this shit... Several times, it's natural to speculate that sort of stuff. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's you hard leave people life. with no other choice for sure. And it's one of those ones where, like Danny said, where you have a guy like Jones's back for so long. It's at what point do you cut him? Like, look, yeah. look, man, you fuck it. 
I hung with you with the strippers in the Bentley. You broke that lady, pregnant lady's arm. Yeah. And fucking just bailed. You, then the coke. You did the coke. You're only human partying. Fair enough. Yeah. You've done the fucking tainted supplement. You've done the PEDs. Like, I'm out, man. Yeah. Like, I'm out. I've got three years to to find other athletes that I can latch on and show my support to in that time. And that the I sports can, always... But that will be here and that will be arriving. Yeah, like, the sports you can always guarantee gonna, that. The sport's always going to be bigger than the individual stars. Absolutely. And like, you look at uh, NRL, no, uh, no product is... No one person is bigger than any product yeah. in world sports yeah. at all. Jordan retires, upsteps LeBron. Fuck exactly. Him. There's always another one. Andrew Johns step, steps up. Here's JT now to tie it over this. Yeah. It just keeps going, going, going. And those people retire as Hall of Famers and legends, but yeah. they had their turn, on it goes. So. Exactly. But Carousel him. just keeps going around. Precisely, man. Precisely. I kind of think that <clears throat> this whole sort of, like I was alluding to earlier with you know, you you don't see the high amount of people getting popped in other sports, but for sure it still exists. You know, I think what we're seeing with this USADA testing is maybe just a, a brief aberration in sport in where this game, this constant game of cat and mouse where it's like, you know, I'm taking di- these different things and you're trying to detect them by these different methods and, oh, you got me, but, you know, I've got this other way to cover it up. And I think this is an... It's an unwinnable fight by the, you know, the 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 scorekeeper or whatever, the the adjudicator in all of this. And I think eventually we'll move to a point where we just kind of accept that athletes take a range of supplements yeah. to enhance their performance. We don't we're not so definite about drawing lines in the sand as to what's considered a legal performance enhancer and what's considered illegal. And I think, you know, you watch you watch Bellator and we just accept it. We're like, oh, yeah, they're all on the juice. It's even, it's even though. Yeah, Ken, so, Ken's back. Like, yeah. Ken's yeah. back. He's yeah. Tito. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, no, no, at, at their age and at the status they're at, Tito is actually better than Chael, you know? <laughs> like, it's a, it's a level playing field. So we're not like, oh, well, they're on the juice. So that doesn't really tell us who is the yeah. better fighter. We're like, no, 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 Tito choked him out. Like, yeah, yeah fucking, yeah. Yeah. they're better. And I think... Kimbo got data on point, man. That's a reality. Like. I, th- I think, you know, as, as we move into the future and as we move more into the realm of being able to hack our DNA, being able to that's, enhance that's our it. bodies and, all, yeah. and do all this different shit, that line in the sand between what's moral and what's it's immoral, get what's real legal blurry. and illegal gets too blurry. There's too many variables and it's too subjective. 100%, to what, man. On the money. You know, so I, think I, think that, I think that eventually it's just like the... The idea of bigger, faster, stronger, and and athletes in general. It might be something that you're a little more apprehensive as a, an a, a, as a parent or somebody who's bringing a child into the world to be like, yeah, I want my kid to be really good at sports. It might be like the same sort of apprehension that a mother would have if her, if if her son wanted to be a rock star. You're like, oh well, rock stars are definitely synonymous with, you know, lots of promiscuous sex and drugs and rock and roll and all that sort of shit. Mm. And the same could be argued about athletes. I don't know if. In the future, we will feel the need to put athletes on this moral pedestal where it's like you're, you're a role model for, for younger generations and stuff like that. It's like, no, what you actually are is somebody who's reached this extreme level of, of a, a, a niche thing, you know, like whether it be sport or music or something that the human beings can perform and can create and stuff like that. We've got these people at the extreme ends of those disciplines that we're like – Fuck, I'll pay fucking $30 million exactly. to be on your shorts to watch you to like, you know. Coming back that, to that, that thing, like we're all fucking bored because we've got nothing to overcome. It's Coliseum days, yeah. straight up. It's like, we paid for blood, yeah. tear his head apart. Like, That's a great one. We don't have anything yeah. to overcome at all. Like, we've got no challenges no, in our life. I was no, pre- no predators are here chasing I was us having this land in the uh, Village Green studio. Exactly. Do you know what, like... Not yet. <laughs> yeah. There's a raging mob outside, like something we said, like they some, took exception. Some like, from uh, uh, Usada. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those five Australian boxing Hen- fans, yeah. Justin. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Boys. And Hen and Burrell. I wasn't here. Hen and Burrell, I just got on a What you say, going my back, friend? Going like, back to your point, Danny, I think that there's in sports, especially, there's always going to be room for both. As humans, we want to back. The underdog, the grassroots, the hard worker, the mm. blue collar, the you know. I beg to differ. Okay. I think we all want to watch the freak show. No, that's what I'm saying. I think there's room for both. 
You think if they make two leagues, or you have clean I, guys versus I'm, dirty guys? I'm not sure how how it's gonna play out as far as within the rules, but I think people are always gonna follow those. Say John Jones somehow weasels his way out of this one. He it's gonna be another another tag to his story. It's gonna be another interesting thing. People will follow that and and still be a fan. And then you've got someone like say. Say Robert Whittaker, for example. No, no one's calling for Whittaker to get on the juice and look like Yoel Romero. Mm. I don't think they're going to cheer for him any. They would probably cheer for him less if he did do something like that. Yeah, he's established his fan base from being that blue collar hard worker. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, I, I just think in sports there's going to be room for 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 both, and how the leagues and the the way it evolves from there. You're always going to have these eccentric people that push the boundaries and mm. that can entertain and compete at the same time and 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 go with outside of the rules, mm. pretend they're inside the rules, whatever. Mm. It, to me, it just seems like a natural a natural progression with competition to have those types of people and your normal yeah people that the fans can relate so to because s- that's definitely because we're still seeing like. Ooh, Vitor's fighting. Like, exactly. You're knowing very well that he's off the source because nah, yeah. he can't. Mirko Krokop. Yeah, yeah, for, left, for example. The anyway, trainer's yeah, left the, the station for that for, one. For Vitor. He, Vitor's, yeah. he's done, man. Like, that's I, I'd like to see him <laughs> call it, you know. He's, he's he at that age and was on the scene at 19. I thought like, he was going to call it hard. after the Gaslam fight. Mm. Yeah. He, no, just, he comes I, out. No, one more. I think he wants to end with, end his career with his hand raised, Vitor. That's that's a good point. Feeding Kelvin Gaslam like that. Bad news, man. That guy's a fucking freak. Yeah. Like, he could be 170 pound champion if he just got that nutrition yeah. in order, man. Honestly, if he had had that, I'd hate for him to look back at the end of his career and go, damn, I didn't make a goal with that. He missed weight so many times at 70. He had such a close fight with Tyron Woodley mm. first time around, and yeah. he was so young at that yeah. point. Yeah. Man. He Split didn't... decision and was so young at that point in time. Like a guy at his age, if you fight. Kelvin Gastelum at 23 and then you run into him at 27, that's a world of difference. Yeah, like, I think so. Weidman was just too big for him at 85, I thought. Yeah. Because Weidman is a, a big 85er and um, fuck, man, I've had some predictions for Weidman, <laughs> Weidman on this body, <laughs> man. <laughs> Throw back to that episode for him pre-Rockhold. I'm like, look, Luke, Luke Rockhold's a good fighter, but Weidman is a great fighter. Like he's going, <laughs> this is Hall of Fame hey status man. here, right hey, here. And, I have uh, to be yeah. on record and say I was the same. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was Weidman. I thought it was Weidman was going to be. He's fucking beating up Anderson and shit. He like, knocked, fuck yeah, he off, he's beating Anderson. He can beat Rockhold. Yeah, like, that's that was the shine sort of that, like, that everyone gets, gets for know? sure. Like you, you <laughs> absolutely buy into that shit, and that's it. Where I don't know, uh, people, this weekend could be perfect example of hype too, where we might end up on Sunday going. Uh, oh shit He put him away In fucking two rounds yeah. That was like, It wasn't really the best thing And he just dropped him off One punch in the second round Or something Yeah They danced around in the first And then he just cracked him And he, he dropped <laughs> You know what I remember Is when we went to the um, oh, Whatever fight night it was In Sydney Where look, the first Bisping Rockhold Bisping oh, oh, Me and Danny went to Rockhold Sydney yeah, fight. Yeah, And we uh, We flew in And on the Friday They had the weigh-ins At All Phones Arena and uh, we may or may not have um, eaten some edible <laughs> marijuana that day. <laughs> a <laughs> and, bomb uh, <laughs> edible at like 4.30 a.m. <laughs> on the uh, on the flight on the way down, we thought maybe we, <laughs> we'd blew a fuse. Like, and, uh, it's definitely a good idea. We should take this now. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was a pretty intense flight to say <laughs> the least. But about 1 p.m. that day, we, 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 we made our way out to All Phones Arena on the train. And, uh, Western Sydney, like <laughs> fucking battling at that point, floating, yeah, oh, they had a, droning, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not floating. Like, oh, is this edible? Fucking, uh, you got a dull headache? Like, <laughs> yeah, you betcha. <laughs> <laughs> UFC. And we, uh, <laughs> and, the, and we, so we went to the the weigh-ins, and before the weigh-ins, they have a fighter Q and A, and a lot of the like, oh, not a lot, but like they choose like two or three fighters to come out and do some the media roster. questions and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> And um, and Weidman was one of them on that oh, nice. uh, on that card, yeah, and uh, <laughs> and so we were like sitting in the audience, and both feeling a little sort of like shadow of our former selves, <laughs> but wanted to ask a question. You had a broken <laughs> hand at the time, <laughs> and I remember I um I was trying <laughs> I was trying to get Pricey to go up and ask Chris Weidman if he felt like. That his victory against Anderson was a bit hollow and it was a bit of a fluke. And he's like looking at me like, I can fucking ask him that. <laughs> 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 like, like he's he's out here on this tour. The yeah. first thing you get up, like, man, do you feel like you, he kind of defeated himself and you sort of won the belt like, <laughs> d- by default or what? Like, 
<laughs> just battling an edible like that. Like, I'm not getting up in front of this 1500 here and fucking. <laughs> So, man, like, must have felt pretty shallow there in the sheds <laughs> afterwards, knowing that he was clowning, like. And then the second uh, time, he had a broken leg, so you didn't even beat him that time either. He's still my boy. <laughs> Chris Weidman's dad. I'm a huge Weidman fan, but I'm not a fan of his, his dad, dad His dad is all. annoying. Stay at home. The cringe city. Man. Stay at home. He's yeah. one of those parents that's way too yeah, overexcited. Get, get yourself a... 1080p internet connection and fucking hook up that HD at home and watch your have son, you, man. Um, oh. have, I know you you have Bryce, but have either of you boys seen um, Trophy Kids on Netflix? Yes, I've seen that. Oh. Yeah. That's gnarly, man. It, you, yeah. you as a father, have you seen that, Jakey? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's ridiculous. It's a good, like, in, it's a good instructional. Eh? De- like definitely. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ten more rounds. Yeah, yeah. Exactly what yeah. not to do as a Pull as your a push cart. Holy Pull your shit. cart. Yeah. Pop you in the mouth. Yeah, they're all American. Um, to an eight-year-old American, girl. Yeah, exactly. American sporting fathers. There's no. Oh, there's there's one mother who's like got, the got her kids. Mom. In. She's probably yeah. the least of all evils on that. She's probably. But the, is still. Uh, but it's still pretty is, intense. Yeah. Oh, hugely intense. And um, it is almost like I found that documentary difficult to watch in parts in in the same way that I did that uh, animal documentary that. Joaquin Phoenix narrates called um, Earthlings, which is essentially you're watching a f- oh, an hour and a half of animal cruelty footage, shit. and you're sort of like I know which one I'd fucking, I'd watch Trophy Kids a thousand times. Like absolutely, that. but I'm saying uh, there there were several times throughout it where I was almost like I don't know how much resolution I'm getting out of this. Basically, I'm just watching child abuse here. Yeah, yeah, and and it's fucking staggering how you know. We talking about earlier, like how thirsty we are for entertainment, and that we will pay these crazy amounts of money to to be entertained, and it's kind of the same for this. It's like you're putting so much on the line for for the sake of a game, mm. you know, and in in the form of this this one father's daughter is like a a, a golfing oh, protege, man. and she's fucking awesome, man, mm. so good. But Eight she, year old. But if she has like a, a, an even slightly bad shot or attempted attempted hole or whatever, like he's basically just like so fucking angry with her that he's just writing her off and saying, "What the fuck? What is wrong with you?" Like and shit like this, like offering no support whatsoever, mm. just basically berating and belittling her. She just like, hit this chip from like. 20 metres behind the back of the green to 10 feet when it should have been six. And it's like, she's eight years old. But mm. then the, the Japanese kids on that documentary, spoiler alert, go on to win and they're sponsored by McDonald's and they've got a car sponsor on their polo shirts and stuff as well. And the dad makes a comment to one of the other fathers there and the other fathers there, you can tell he wants nothing to do with the situation like that. Mm. All he's just there encouraging his daughter in a in, in a golf like competition. And the the... Trophy dad is there going, look at all these Japanese kids, man. Look at them sponsors, man. They're paying for them lessons. Like, no wonder we can't close the gap. Like, yeah. I'm paying $150 a week. That's, that's and his wage over there, might be, he might be on 28000 a year mm. or something in, yeah. in America. Yeah. So I'm paying $150 a week for this shit. He's like, they get him because they can get the sponsor money and they can slap him around. Like, and they can slap yeah. him around. He yeah. goes, we can't do that here. They lock us in jail. <laughs> That's his right. His dead set That's says right. this to one yeah. of the other fathers there while he knows he's wearing a fucking microphone. Yeah. yeah. Being That's, going, yeah. What that, on earth? That's another level and that's what it all... That's coming back to the point like everything revolves around money or the parent living through the, the child oh. like, oh, I, I could have... I missed my mm, opportunity but ego. I'm not going to... The I'm football gonna, dad reeked of being a yeah. fucking loser. The football I mean, dad was that. the one that never made it and was yeah, like, exactly. fuck, it doesn't yeah. matter because my to, son's going to make it. Got to college and fucked up. Yeah. And the dad, he's there like, why you got a girlfriend? He's 15 years old. It's one of his first interactions with, with a female species in the world where they're trying all sorts of freaky shit on each other and like at, adolescence as, as a man too, like just... So many loads that this kid, <laughs> <laughs> this kid, this kid would have been you blowing, and him. the dad's there <laughs> dressing him down in the car like, "Why do you even have a girlfriend? You're only going to break up. You don't know shit. Like you don't know shit." And he's like, "Dad, like the dad, like in dead tears, set in yeah. tears, looking to his own father for advice, and he's there yeah. just berating him like, you don't know fucking shit yet. Like you don't know Should shit. Be concentrating like, oh. on football. Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, well, dad, like, I'm." playing cornerback for this team here like i'm not yeah. you can tell right away that i'm not in that one yeah. percent like yeah there's so, how many league football teams are across america like the, the nfl is a billion dollar industry over there so many different leagues it is the out and out one percent that make it to exactly that. it's crazy man you think you know 
growing up you sort of hold your parents to this standard of like oh my my parents are invincible like or you know they're they're the fucking they're the model of of how you should live your life or whatever and it's it's kind of synonymous that people that have you know don't have those role models have like have a skewed view of reality and stuff like that but even people who do you don't necessarily you know just because you're a parent doesn't mean you know the right way to go like we all know as human beings every single one of us is flawed as fuck like nobody's perfect you might think you know the tiger woods is perfect but at the end of the day he's as flawed as everybody else and nobody's getting through this shit without without (laughs) creating creating a huge fucking mess in, in in the process you know exactly and it's like fuck it's it's such a roll of the dice you just you you never know who you're who is going to teach you how to live your life. Like, and, and if that happens to be one of these fucking psychopaths that just like push you through sport, that's going to shape you as a human being and shape your relationships throughout your life and it's stuff like the, that. It's uh, fucking crazy. When, when I say funny, because he doesn't seem to be like the uh, really abusive dad on the on the trophy kids, the the Italian basketball dad, the yeah. New Yorker, well, living out in L.A. Terrible, just, oh, he's he, fine. He's, he's, ter- he's, ter- he's terrible, but it's just so funny. That you're he's like, just trying he to get you, some you, th- you think, from the game. You he's think just trying to get some 15-year-old he, pussy. He man. is just direct from your seed, from your shit genetics, and you think your son is going <laughs> to the NBA? Like, yeah. Where do just, you get off? Just fighting like, against genetics ex- at exactly the very right. start. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's all about his, hard his work. Dad, it's yeah. all about hard work. His dad's 5'7", and he thinks his son, the point guard, is fucking the next Steph Curry. Like, <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Could no, dribble no, dis- that no, kid, di- no disres- disrespect to that kid. And he was a standard college basketball player yeah. over there at a Div 2 school. He wasn't proper like NCAA yeah. basketball, but that's how big the talent pool is in that country over there. It is, it is a lethal, lethal business where... NFL season is just around the corner again, and I've fo- followed that for multiple years now. Like first touch base with the NFL playing Madden on video games, yeah. I'm like, this shit is fucking awesome. You start start to follow it. A lot of people out here like, and, and it is warranted as well because it does take a long time to do. Yeah. So it it shies people away from it a little bit, but if you can get get into it and dedicate time to it and get to know some of the personalities, like like we are with fighting, it is a great sport and it it gives so much back to you. But um. There's a program called NFL Hard Knocks that's released every preseason uh, that rolls around where it's a full showtime production awesome as well. So shows. it's the, the, the equivalent of an all access. And to get a behind the scenes into that industry, uh, last year was the LA Rams. Yeah. This year they've got Atlanta Falcons. And I must admit, I'm yet to see an episode of that. Yeah. But uh, to see how the 1% get by in that industry, where we're looking back at Trophy Kid Dad, looking to try and get his son in with his dad's 5'6 genetics. And you're seeing these guys at the top level in an NFL <laughs> franchise where they start the Five, camp for... genetics. That's it, man. He wants, to be, wants his son to be the next Kobe when it's his seed that he passed on. It's like you, come, you need to be realistic in that game where America proves it too in this point where NFL hard knocks, you get a squad of 100 assembled in an NFL preseason for like, what, a 56-man roster in the end? Yeah. So the, like, you get offense, defense, special teams, 56 guys total or... It Is couldn't it, be less. Might even might even it's be less, but I yeah. forty-four. May, yeah, maybe something like yeah, something like that. But because they cut it from that to like an extended squad and then chop it down. But long long on the short of it, at the start of these preseason camps, you can see where well, they'll be in preseason in one like day three of a, a midweek camp. They've just done a beep test, have a break afternoon. They're going to go do some field work. You'll see a receiver drop a pass, and it's Stuart. Pack your bags, go home. Keep, keep grinding. Keep grinding, mm. baby. It's just not it's, you're not the fit. Like you're not the fit. Pack your bags. Thank you. Yeah. Because they're not paying Talent for any of your meals so or your physio or anything deep. like that for any of that thing. And it, it is just cutthroat of that. But fascinating product to watch NFL in terms of ath- athletes and alleged PEDs and things like yeah. that. Yeah, and going to the the center in that for the LA Rams. Um, his name, I can't quite remember, but he's wearing the singlets with, with the guns and, and uh, the way that they did their final cutoff was they had the PT, um, the strength and conditioning coach, they were all in there for their afternoon gym session and he just walked around, tapped them on the shoulder and said, coach wants to see you. Yep. And it was it was brutal. You're watching these, it was the final cut, so I think they were going from about... Yeah. 50 down down to the 40 or whatever. As in just watching them perform in the gym and being like, I don't like the look of that squat, you're out, bruss. Yeah, that it's, sort of thing. It's, or? No, it's but based on field, yeah, field work and everything like that. Like, look, the 
we've flagged a couple of potential things that we don't like about th- this one player. This look, and he's, he, he's having thing. a bit of an off day in the gym yeah. here. Look, look, man, it ain't working. It's not your time. Yeah. You, you're it, not going to be in the top three. Like you're not first, second, or third string here. All the performance is there, and they're like the the strength side of things, or his size. He's not quite as big yeah. as you know we need for for that position. And um, so they it's all based on basically the field and the training, but the way that they do it, they have them all working out. So they don't know whether they're going to get the tap on the shoulder or, or whatever. And, and it's just a room full of athletes, you know. You can't really tell the difference. They, they all look like professional, you know, NFL mm. spec athletes. It's and like judging choreography and exactly, shit like that. Yeah. Like, oh, well, he caught one ball, he dropped one ball, he held that exactly. high pirouette, but uh, the just gifted just and... cutthroat business. It'd be a hell of a fucking job being a, an NFL talent scout. Wouldn't it ever? <laughs> Getting shopped around to you know? to lo- local college towns, going and eyeing talent. You know what you're looking for, but that's the same with footy out here. You know what you're looking at. Any of us that have known or have been able to witness any junior rugby or rugby union player out here that has gone on to make it, it was evident from a very early point that they were. Mm. You know, there was the, the, ta- the talent in- stands out out here because the talent pool isn't as deep. Where yeah. in America, it's a bit cloudy, so they have to have all of these college systems right across the country. To be able to cast that net and go, all right, well, each college team here, we've got literally hundreds of colleges across state with fifty-six man rosters on game day. All right, we're so gonna we're gonna pick fun. we're gonna Take pick the one percent from yeah, this yeah. to go and start for those thirty-two NFL teams of fifty-six men only. So there's only gonna be fifteen hundred players out of these. Do you think of it as a business model? That's how you get the best representation mm. for your entertainment, and that's why and that's it how is. You get the best. You know, that's what, why what all the, all the things that come along with that, like all the marketing and sponsorships and stuff, huge you know? business and marketing. That's you think right. it's a team sport, you know, like fucking there's there's that many fucking people on that roster compared to an individual sport. It's ridiculous. He gave you that short ball. Trying to hit me up with a segue, but I only yeah. do organic shit, fam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking too good, man. Uh, like, lobs it <laughs> <laughs> to Dan to finish. Speak, oh, speaking of marketing, yeah. <laughs> well, have you seen that Bonds campaign right now? <laughs> Should I, I see it? I was, I was at Woolies the other day, man, and there's this um, there's this Bonds ad that's basically like as tall as you, cardboard cutout of this dude who's got to be like oh, I don't know, twenty years old, and uh, looks like something you'd see in sort of like a gay porn of like, you know, the, you know, the stereotypical, because <laughs> all, all the gay porn. Gay porn, porn right? Right? But anybody who's, uh, any, anybody who knows anything really knows that gay people have like uh, different, different sorts of gay guys. Like there's bears who are big, like hairy macho guys. And then they yeah, have, there is. I think, it, is it tweens? Twinks. 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 Otters. Yeah, Twin, twinks are like yeah, otters. more... So, yeah, otters. I'm otters. way out of the loop. <laughs> I don't even know this shit exists. For sure, we're only scratching the, the tip of the surface here, but... Um, but this this <laughs> this guy is like looks like a bit of a twink, right? But but they're marketing him as a as a heterosexual guy because it says, "This is what a cool dad looks like in big oh. in big block letters," and it's this like <laughs> twenty year old like shredded little like um, a cool dad looks twink like. in, in his in his bonds like boy leg jocks and stuff just standing there. Next time you go to all these bed, check it out, <laughs> and like. It's it's quite confronting, like d- definitely depending on what state of mind you're in when you when you visit the grocery right. store. But um, confronting because <laughs> it throws some questions. Confronting in, there about, in, in yeah. just the like the outrageousness of the marketing strategy behind it that they were like, let's get this like super like boyish good looking dude and put him in jocks and <laughs> like this is what a cool dad looks like, not you, you fat fuck. Like, yeah, did this guy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Did this you're guy there, and, and it's right next to like the Maggi Noodles Isle and shit. So you're there buying your fucking who wore one dollar eighty six packet of ramen <laughs> and fucking Who wore it better? <laughs> just feeling like absolute shit about yourself so you go and spend forty bucks on jocks like Bond guy or Tiger Woods. Fuck man, if I'm woods. If, if I'm a uh, woods I'm on a, point, <laughs> <laughs> you can't fuck with woods, man. Yeah. Like, this is just some other dude with a it's with that a, long ball. With well, this is just some angry advertising dad, like. agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is some twenty year old kid, man. He ain't fucking with no wood shit. <laughs> but then I thought about it as well. Imagine if you're that dude, and imagine if you go into Woolies. I mean, 
to to be that guy in that campaign, you're probably stoked that you're standing in your jocks like at, at basically life size in, in the grocery store. That Matty J. But, but how, made yeah, it. how weird would it be to be like, you know, walking at your local store or whatever and you're in, in life size in your jocks like and there's there's a 60-year-old woman with her shopping cart going past and stuff. You watch... Uh, <laughs> slipping over. You watch my reality <laughs> TV. TV is hard to get a, to get a watch in these days with Netflix and, and yeah. you know and all, all, yeah, the, good, all the good shows and docos yeah. you got going on. But I, I do catch a bit here and there. Yep, I've, uh, we get down with the Bachelor hard here. Oh, around, okay, around yeah. here, man. <laughs> That's why you missed me on that one. But yeah, oh. shout it's out. It's not Matty too late J. to get on. It's not not too late to get on board. Tuning in now would be the equivalent of chiming in to watch the semi-finals of a product. Yeah, so. Okay. Man, you talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. Join the team. Yeah, it's not it's not like the early rounds where they're just chopping and changing and mm. finding order of status and that. Like the order of merit's well and truly there, and it's who's going to get the flag. Like at this point, so. and is it pretty competitive or is it? It's yes, such a absolutely. fucking ridiculous concept, man. It's beyond belief. This is it's a good like, one, though. But D- it's a Dan, bachelor's dream. Dan, Dan and I, really oh, absolutely it is. He, he's playing the field Mate, with he, six or seven there, women at a time. Like, he's there posing in a photo where it's literally him in his boardies, and they've put him through, like, the best fucking 12-week challenge of his life, like, leading into this. So he's just looking the best that the he's ever going to possibly look best 12 weeks of Terenabol he's ever had. <laughs> 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 he got him that junk shit. That, that lean muscle mass, son. <laughs> Quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's standing I, there. Just ate well. he's, he's standing there in front of a mansion in this beautiful green garden. Powerlifting, with, man. Powerlifting. With multiple females like flanked either side of him, you know. And it's like these chicks, man, get so fucking competitive over this situation that it's literally like the craziest fucking concept you could think of. This guy standing there with all these chicks who are basically trying to slit each other's throats to get time with him to like start a relationship with him with lights, camera, action, man. They're like making out with a huge film crew there and stuff like that. It's just... There's I feel like... The thing with the scenes, strange. there's at least a, two dozen people behind the cameras while they're there. Yeah. Sound guy, production guy, stage guy. So they're having a date in front of them. In front of the but this guy here, he's been through this product before. The Bachelor this year was the runner-up last year. So he absolutely... Oh, so recycle. Absolutely <laughs> fell in love with the girl... <laughs> Fell short, absolutely yeah. filters through. Like, geez, but he's good actually, looking dude, marketable. He is actually um, was used to work the door at the GPO. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nice Brisbane he, guy. Yeah, yeah, so like we actually knew of him growing okay. up. You know what I mean? So he's just like this other, you know, six degrees of separation. Yeah. Just, just a regular Joe that's now so all of a sudden on it's such a strange concept. It, Sorry, I didn't it, mean to interrupt. No, you. no, no, yeah. no. Dead. Oh, all good. I feel, I, I, I feel like I feel like the girls on those shows, like the between the Bachelorette and the Bachelor, I feel like the girls get. I mean, I I haven't watched any of it. V- very different psychology for sure. Yeah. Whereas the guys are kind of like, well, well they bond together. Yeah, they they sort of like we're, we're just they g each other room. up. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Jumac on, mate. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. Good on Good your buddy. Yeah. <laughs> there is that. Check sort out of, this photo. There was. They yeah. end up having this like bro code and shit exactly. In, in they the can previous they can slip whereas into the girls like are just like fuck you, bitch. Yeah. Oh, it's there cutthroat. That. It's cutthroat. Where this year, I think old mate got his. Uh, Heartbroken last season because he did like genuinely fall for this girl. It, it well, it certainly seemed through production anyway. But um, coming into this season, he's learnt the product, so he's familiar what it's like being on the other side for the girls. So he's there, and at this point, there's probably eight left. Yeah, and each one of them he's hooking up with on these dates because he he's throwing these say. extravagant dates, and he's smooth talking yeah. all of them. So each of them think. Oh shit! Like, he knows all, all these the, other girls have been on a me. date, but I'm the he one. was just talking about my future and yeah, shit because we clicked. One. So it could be one of these seasons, and we're putting out predictions for Mayweather and McGregor this weekend. <laughs> but <laughs> go for it. Maddie might get hung out to dry at the end of this season. You, you know, leading a couple of these any? girls on and then tossing them. Where Richie Strahan, shout out season sixteen, <laughs> like, dated a girl. There was a Nikki that was a crowd favorite on season one. Dumped her, and then all through the media, Instagram. How could you, Richie? Like, she, she was the one where this might happen with Maddie this year where he's got four or five genuine prospects and he's going to let have to let them all down. That's the cutthroat situation of reality TV, my oh, friend. It's a fucking <laughs> well, that, sad world. You know, I think the, I think the older I get, the, the more I become conscious of just how different men are to women and how, like, there's, you know, we're the same species but that 
different chromosomal or hormonal or whatever it is, you know, difference between us counts for so fucking much, man. Like, and I've got this like special sort of um, interest in like these weird documentaries on on Netflix that all all seem to border around older single pathetic men and like <laughs> like whether it be whether it be uh male mail order wife mm. my sex robot um guys and dolls which is this <laughs> this doco dark, about guys with re- guys re- and dolls that real dark dolls. Net one that you're talking about with the rinko the yeah. japanese men dark, with the dark net as well and um it's just fucking it's crazy because you would you would never see a woman doing the same sort of thing. Like you'd never see a bu- a group of women on a bus in the Ukraine going to different socials together to to meet a, a Ukrainian man like for a husband, like for ob- obvious reasons for like, you know, population and stuff like that as well. But it's just like, I don't know, there's this there's this thing about men that that, that monkey brain, if if we find it difficult to overcome that in our lives there's this arrested adolescence where you see these guys in their 60s and they're basically no different to the dude playing Nintendo and fucking eating Pop-Tarts at <laughs> yeah. at 17 that can't take care of himself, you know? And it's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. It's it's a tragic this, thought. There's this real tragic sort of inherent sadness in it that for some reason I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy <laughs> watching. Like may, maybe I it's, see that shit and I'm like, man, i got to grow up. Maybe it's, a, grow up. <laughs> maybe it's a way up. of like, you know, Think maybe, that time. Take making care sure that I'm taking care of business, but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. And, and that, that 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 show just, oh, I don't know, it exemplifies that for me. Eh? Just yeah. like that line between the genders that's just the way the women act around each other is, is fucking so catty and and then the guys bond together and it's just like we're, we're fucking different creatures, eh? We really are. This, uh, the, mail, the whole mail order bride thing in terms of like technology and dark net, things like that. On uh, the most recent episode of Ballers on uh, HBO, like The Rock's the main character. Have you seen much of Ballers? I've seen bits and pieces, yeah. yeah. D- like quality show. I've talked about it on here before. It's another one. Fo- Entourage with football yeah. basically is the, is the brief. But on this most recent episode, they have uh, Joe, one of the agents, is with one of the players from the Dallas Cowboys and he's bought into a weed business. And they're like, the NFL is just frowning upon it. They're like, do that in retirement. Like, while you're a player, weed still legal a lot of places. Like, it's just not the best look. So they talk him out of it. So this agent negotiates him into buying a uh, shares in a virtual reality company instead. So they, they go to the HQ of this company, try on all these virtual reality headsets. And they're there. And they're in it. First off, they're in it underneath an NFL helmet. And... Um, they're like, geez, these linebackers are big, like run, running around simulating a game of NFL where these people come in, they're throwing the ball at people running. Like, it lo- looks super cool. But nice. Joe, the agent, ends up taking it home and turns it in, like u- using it for like sex based stuff. <laughs> He's Course there having, he does. Like, put, puts it on, s- sits on his own couch, and th- there's two girls there in a threesome in proper HD quality in this headset that he has, which it w- would end up eventually for sure. Like, that's the way it's going. <laughs> the funniest quote of this entire episode where he's there talking to him and they zoom it they show the reality of what he's looking at, zoom back to him in his couch in his like purple pajamas and shit. And he's like <laughs> he's the bald guy of hot tub time machine. So he's super Try, funny, like yeah. comedy actor, man. Like really, really good yeah. comedy actor. And he goes, uh he's like, What's that? You want me to lick whipped cream off your tits? Of course I will, Margo. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, on this proper virtual reality simulator and that sort of stuff. As it progresses, could see the death of the mail order. Yeah, you feel me? Like, yeah. that's where I was going with that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's well, late. That, 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 like, that darknet series has like uh, some statistics about Japanese men in in 2017 being um, the lowest amounts of relationships ever. Mm. And there's this uh, fucking cuddle bar, say, like, cuddle pubs, and shit. Junko or something like that is basically like a, a video game that they all play. That's Rinko. Essentially, Rinko, that's right. Yeah. yeah. It's Shout essentially out. a uh, like an AI girlfriend type experience that they play, but um, they're saying that that's grown basically men. grown men, man, like and across the board, and they're saying it's you know replacing relationships for a lot of modern Japanese men and stuff like that. Definitely, uh, definitely. You heard of that shit? That, I, haven't um, heard of that I haven't specifically. That it's definitely believable <laughs> with the yeah. way that um, it's been around for a while social. since like uh, Nintendo DS and stuff. They were saying. 
But um, no wonder Del Murphy could take two home with him. Like, <laughs> 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 just fought for choice. Oh yeah, man! <laughs> well, well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. W- Japanese women are actually one of the, um, I guess, one of the few or one of the m- the most um, you know highest numbers of older women who actually use male escorts. Not not mm. always like in terms of sex, but they have these like boyfriend experience bars where you know older professional women who don't have time for a relationship or a family or anything like that will pay these sort of like Japanese boy band looking 24 year old dudes to like sit with them and and buy them drinks and flirt and the stuff boyfriend like experience that. Yeah, they get yeah, the convenience yeah. out and then the BFE back, back to work ja- Japanese <laughs> Japanese culture is massively commodified relationships and sex and and all of that sort of aspect of life it's like you know what we've got too many fucking people to try and really organize mm. this so Everything's for sale. you know let's let's commodify this put it in into categories like you're paying for a girlfriend experience like no emotion behind it you know just fucking it's it's a bizarre world man like there's lots Being of weird shit like that that fucking mail order wife docker the the types of guys that um you know it, it's i think it's a in their case it's a huge lack of self-awareness like there's this guy who's Pushing 60, man, extremely overweight and unfortunate looking and works for the federal government. So he's obviously just like saved up enough cash over his time. But basically his bio, they're showing him sitting in his living room and his living room's quite obviously set up by somebody who's, you know, 58 going on 17 because he's got his TV like in the corner with his chair like right up against it with his gaming console and then all along the the shelf he's got all of these different sort of figurines and stuff like (laughs) that and he's sitting there with his virtual reality goggles on and his big sort of like giant belly sticking out in front playing video games and the chicks that – so it's all about this um, a foreign affair is what this website's called. And so basically, What's that, a, a foreign affair foreign affair dot com, and um, it's basically, it's Except basically Bitcoin. like you you choose photos of women, and then it charges you per email to send and receive uh. emails. So these guys are saying that by the end of this sort of exchange exchange, they've spent up to up to ten grand and stuff Crazy. like that, just to send emails in of, emails. Uh, and this guy who's just like the world's like un. Un, most unattractive catch ever is picking these chicks that are legit 25 huge lips tits like look like they belong on the cover of a porno sort of thing and he's he's legitimately like trying to get married to these women and stuff like that it's just it's so pathetic you have it's to crazy. register before you can see anything uh, on the website did it yeah. get to a point where he a goes affair? he goes yeah, to the country let me just log in <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely worked um, you know in the in the trade in a couple of workshops where you have that that old you know battle axe going into his sixties that that um has like a a Thai girlfriend online you know online and, yeah, yeah and it, it it gets to the point where they they're talking to each other back and forth and and then he sends money over for a birthday and then it's the kid's birthday he sends money over mm. for that and then it turns out they're married that, that would and then happen you got to get an annulment. Trim- Oh really? Yeah, in Th- in Thailand, especially being Christian, it, it, they need to pay the Catholic Church. So then they're hitting them up for thousands, six thousand dollars. You know, oh, but once I'm divorced, then we'll be able to finally be together. Right. Things like that, and they, these <laughs> these fellas, and, and you can tell them, you you can say, mate, you're being taken for a ride. Like this is nah, what man, happens. Nah, good, will they? They just cannot yeah. see. Yeah. How how, how it's it works. Their last like chance, that. man. It's it, like, yeah. Nah. It's 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 and sad it's, in a way. It's, mate, these like, new windows these closing. News say otherwise, mate. Yeah. Like, uh, no, mate. There's thirty dudes getting nudes right now. Yeah, but, but that, how's yeah. this website, man? You got the quick search for the Wednesday updates, and you got an age Oof. range, eighteen to forty-five. Oh, they've got it in pounds as well. You that is genius. What weight in pounds? So age, Why? weight, and Why region. I thought that was pounds and kilograms. And there. region, Sorry, we've got inverter. Then I Russia, saw the Ukraine is the default. That must be where they get most of them. Yeah. Latin America, Asia, and Europe. Let's have a look at Latin America. Tios, meos. <laughs> 26 to 39. 50. Uh, yeah, 30, <laughs> 30, yeah, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Oh, jeez. Wow, look oh, at it's that. Even an like uncomfortable, ding, ding, ding. It's even an uncomfortable... It's even an uncomfortable thing to look at, isn't it? Is it? Like, it's it's, it's, it's like, an awkward... Oh, it just gives you the fucking heebie-jeebies yeah. looking at it. You're like, yeah, someone's actually legitimately going into this. To There's a few of them online, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
a couple of green dots. See, this is the thing. At, at, Katia, at the back end of your... Oh, Anna's uh, beautiful. Ca- at the she back end of your career, at, seven, at 70 years old, uh, Filthy Rich just presented the credit card. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. He's out. seen something he likes. He's yeah. like, yes, I'm up, boys. Episode 39, we welcome Anna to the <laughs> knockoff <laughs> podcast. Uh, I am a man. Yeah, She's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. But She's that's got uh, two girls... And what? Marital state of single children, two. Two. Boy, ten. Oh, shit. Girl, I ten, thought it boy, said she five. had ten boys. No, she's got two two kids, but like she's been busy. No. <laughs> Hobbies, new yeah. places, movies, It's and hard reading. to imagine someone. I like new that, places, that, movies, and reading. At 65 years old, though, logging in and going... Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, no. she's I, a I can't wrap my head around that. Yeah, you can, you can see how they fall, in, fall into the trap. Yeah. And like I said, it, it is you right. do sort of half feel sorry for them as they're trying to convince you and themselves at the same time. Buddy and I went on a uh, a Ukrainian mail order website after watching a documentary once, like, and we're sort of just sussing out the situation there. And as you say, all the girls were su- looked like supermodels, yeah. but were probably probably Photoshop. It mightn't have been the real the real woman that you would get at the end of the day, but. The, the whole shtick with this website was it was a free entry fee. You could just log in and sign up, start chatting to people, but you had the option of sending emojis and things oh, like that. Okay. So, you could, hey, send her a virtual bunch of flowers. Pay your 700 US dollars ah. first to send a bunch of flowers. So the girls could, would be able to see at the other end, like, shit, he sent me three bunches of flowers this week. He's paid two grand just to email me. Yeah. So exactly. That's how you prove that you know you got that, the dough. And, and yeah. that was the whole shtick for it. What? How so much was the eggplant on, emoji to send that? Free. <laughs> <laughs> of course. How often do you see of that? Of course. Egg, eggplant in a splash emoji? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we speak with emojis these days. Eh? How crazy is that? Conor McGregor's got his own emoji app, man. Yeah, He's right. He's got his own emoji. Like, sort of like what? modern day hieroglyphs. Like a Kim Kardashian emoji sort mm. of thing. It's the McGregor's. Where it, him, little caricature in a suit. like Things like that. Have That's you, it, man. Um, we got we got one more day. We got one more day to wait. Are you uh, tomorrow? It's all over. Tomorrow, the waiting. Yeah, it's correct. all done and dusted. We wake up on Sunday morning and fucking here we are. Wayne's will be um will be a good. That's tomorrow morning. Show. Yeah, yeah. A- Eight a.m. Mm-hmm. You can watch it on Fox. So I'll be uh, t- tuned in for that for sure. But we've laid down our projections. We're doing our shit. Stay with us, Knock Off Nation, signing off for another Friday. Jakey, thanks for coming on, mate. Appreciate your time. Appreciate the delicious espresso martinis you God made through the were good. at Stonehand Cold Press. God Saw damn. Jakey out for your shit. Berg, thanks for coming up. See you Sunday Always for the fights. Knock Off Nation, peace. Peace.